Okay, so I I would say starting from the, the this set that we're doing now is like I would say it's like the beginning of the end game sets. So like now we're gonna have a shift. That, um, it's the, the mentality is gonna be a little different about how we approach the floors. Like now, starting from now, we're gonna worry about time more than anything. Uh, so we're gonna just make sure we optimize the time as much as possible. If we optimize the time well, we should not need pomanders uh, well until like 170 so or so. Like we should get by with the freebies we get from the chest as long as we make sure we optimize our time. <clears throat> the way you optimize your time on tank, very simple. Always be fighting. That's it. Like you want to first priority is you want to find the room with the key. Uh, no, I, let me put it the other way actually. First priority is you want to be fighting something at all times if the key is not open. Second priority is you want to locate the the key room as quickly as possible to make sure that there's no monsters uh, that you need to kill in the way that you would have to kill once the key is already open, right? Uh, so that's how we're gonna approach the set starting from now. So let me show you what's coming for the next set. So there's gonna there's gonna start being monsters, uh, like way more monsters that I have to mention. That's just how it is. So first, the demon, this guy has a 30 or so second in rage. Uh, it's a long cast that when he, when he finishes the cast, I believe it does 99% of your health. Uh, but you don't really have a reason to let him complete the cast because first he's probably gonna die before he does it. Uh, even if he does not, you can stun him. Mm -hmm. And I believe you can maybe even interrupt it. So like there's no reason you should let him finish the cast. Uh, the cat actually does nothing, so that's good. Manticore is not really that dangerous. It's a patrol and when he sees you, he's gonna charge you. Uh, then now and then he's gonna do an untelegraph uh, cone in front of him. That's called Ripper Claw. Just make sure you're not standing in front of him. It, it should not one shot you, but still. Uh, the Gorgol is actually packs a lot of damage. So you gotta be careful when you fight these guys. You def definitely don't want to be fighting multiple guys. Like, I would say starting from now, you don't want to be fighting multiple guys ever. But especially the Gorgol, you don't want to be fighting this and you know other things at the same time because this guy alone already hurts. Um, Knight, he hurts a little bit, but mostly it's uh, if you take if you take a long time to kill him, he's gonna go into in is in rage, which doubles his damage for ten seconds. Uh, it's still not that much of an issue. You can use defensives to deal with it. Uh, the boot is like before; it doesn't do anything except he's gonna paralyze you every uh, I don't know about around. After around 15 to 20 seconds, he's going to start casting a long Paralyze on you. You can stun him to stop it. Uh, the rate is as before, but now now you're going to see the scream every time you fight one because it, it takes too long to kill. Just make sure you stun or interrupt it. l Hound is not too bad. Uh, Persona is like the boot. He's going to paralyze you after a little bit and you can prevent it with st a stun. Uh, Succubus is actually very annoying. It's, it's less of an issue on tank. But so what, what she does is she, she's going to cast EOEs in other rooms. Every, uh, I don't know, every 30 seconds maybe. But these are huge EOEs, right? Like these are very big EOEs. And uh, what's going to happen is you're, she's going to cast them all the time. And it, there, at some point she's going to cast one in the bad spot or at bad time. And then it's going to force you to dodge inside the room. Probably while you're fighting something already, and now this means that you're at a high risk of pulling either something else by mistake or hitting a trap. So she's like, she's like an enabler for doing a mess up, right? So, so yeah, you have to, to respect the succubus, and in fact, I would say this is probably the monster you want to kill the, the most, like the, the the most quickly after patrol. So, uh, if you still need kills to open the key, succubus is like a top priority pick. Uh, on its dragon doesn't do much. He does a side gaze and then a cone, but it, you really should not be getting hit by either of them. Uh, Keeper is just a patrol with high damage. And Mimic uh, is a normal Mimic. Okay, so we're ready. So like I said, we're gonna play totally different than how we played before. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it as I go. 
So if you are the if you have been having time issues starting from now, this is like where you want to be paying attention because this is this is like the, the way we play on this set is going to be the way we play on all the upcoming sets. So if you're having time issues on this set, then you're never going to make it to 200. You need to learn now how to be optimal about your time. <clears throat> so first priority, always be fighting. Second priority, find a key quickly. So what that means is simply we are going to fight the first thing we see. And then we're gonna find a key. Key's there. Uh, so our, our job is actually very simple. We're just gonna kill monsters until we get out. That's it. Starting with the monsters that are the most likely to be in the way of the key. So of course I'm gonna kill these two demons. Because why would I not kill them, you know? They're the most likely monster to be in my way when I have to leave. So like I said, this guy is going to do some kind of enrage. You can simply stun or interrupt it. We're, we're probably going to see it because I did not have Berserk. It should be very soon. There it is. You can, you can stun this or interrupt. So always be fighting. I would only go for chests that are in your like immediate surrounding. So like if a chest takes you about three seconds to get to, okay, you can go get the chest. Any more than that, and I, I don't think you should go to the chest. Just fight. Uh, so when a respawn happens, it will happen in a random room. It, it will be either a patrol or a normal monster. It, if it's a patrol, it will, it will still respawn inside the room. But it will start patrolling uh, after it respawns, so it can be either of them. But it will never, it will never be like a patrol that respawns in the in the hallway. That cannot happen. That's impossible. If it's a patrol, it will respawn in the in the room as a normal monster and then start moving. So always be fighting. We're gonna fight everything in this room. Making sure we're checking all the chests in the way, but we are not exploring, okay? That's the thing you have to keep in mind. So we're, this is very different than all you would play in Machinist. We do not explore. We explore until we find the key and that's it, right? I want to keep this guide like very simple. So we like I could like like I, I, if I was doing a normal run, a score run, I would explore as I'm fighting the monsters. But like we, I want to keep this as simple as possible. So we're actually just going to 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 tank the monsters where they are, move very little, kill until it is open. So this guy is the one I said that hurts a lot. You want to make for this one. You want to make sure you use like some kind of defensive, probably run right cushion. Uh, yes, if you're unlucky, a monster will spawn near you when you're trying to leave on the team. So if that happens, well, it just sucks. You can't do anything about it. Blitz is open. Um, let's see if we can avoid him. If not, it's not the end of the world. Okay, good. And we just leave. Well, I, after I get my shirt, but we just leave. Simple as that. We don't explore. We don't care. We don't need to explore. So this is a drop. So let me check this real quick. Yeah. So this is a strength. Only get the chests that are like three seconds away at most. So this guy might did not. Oh yeah. So the respawn timer is a fixed amount that that is different between each set. Uh so Right now, we're starting the what I like to call the end game sets. So that he's there, perfect. We're gonna kill everything in this room. 
So right now we started what is uh, I call like to call the end game sets. Uh, for the end game sets, this one I'm on right now, 141 to 150, the respawn timer is 1 minute 30 seconds, which sucks. That means you're gonna see a lot of respawns in your face. But starting from 150, respawns are 5 minutes. So starting from 150, it's going to be very unlikely that we get screwed over by respawns. Like it can happen, but it's it's much more rare. So there's a patrol behind me. There's a little risk it's gonna see me. I'm not gonna go inside the room to dodge it because there's a risk that I would hit the trap inside that room without finding the road. So like, I would prefer to take the risk of the patrol seeing me than a trap in the room, right? So I'm gonna fully show you what it does. It will charge me. Then after that, it, it gets a damage buff that doesn't really change much, honestly. And then you just want to make sure you're not in front of it when it does this thing. Ripper Clock. This. Just go, be go behind. So there I use Provo to pull the monster because it was very far. Yeah, basically, before 150, just keep, like, I would say, like, be mindful of response because they're more likely to screw you over. Beyond 150, still, like, be mindful of response, but, like, it's it's not... Well, it's still a big deal, but it, they happen, like, much more rarely. But also, the thing is that once you make it past 150, since the response are 5 minutes, it's much more easy to, easy to, to uh, keep track of them. So we have another strength there, good. So if you remember, I said that the usually a key is going to take between five to let's say it's gonna take between like five to eight kills to open. So usually you just, you want to try and make sure you have at least eight monsters to kill before you go to the key, right? So this guy is the fifth one that I kill. Then this Manticore is going to be the 6th one. And if it's still not open with this guy, then I'm going to kill the two other monsters in that other room, and then we should be good. So right now what we're doing, all, we're always fighting, uh, which is the number one rule for uh, tank. So th this is what always, like, this is what to be always fighting looks like. So if I'm doing, because I, I kind of want to show like what it looks like if you think you're always fighting, but you're not. But let's see, right? Like, for example, right now, let's say I really want to go into inside this room. I am not fighting. Like, I, I'm not always fighting right now. I'm waiting. This is bad. This is what I, I you, you should not do. You should not be doing this. What you should be doing if you want to explore is you should be doing it while you have a monster on top of you. But like, if you're waiting for monsters to move, that you you are not always fighting. You are like doing the opposite of what you're supposed to do. If you do this and you keep waiting, you know, like 20 seconds for monsters to move, and then you go, you're gonna run out of time. It's you're not gonna feel like you're running out of time, but you're gonna run out of time. You want to be fighting monsters nonstop. So this guy might see me. He did not. I got lucky. We're just gonna go to the key. Preferably, you would like to kill monsters by the key last, so that the key opens, you know, when you're close to it. But it, this is not that big of a deal, and it, it means if you do that, there's more chance that you have to do a lot of bad track. So, so always be fighting. We just fight everything between the key and us, and we check all the chests uh, on the way. That's it, and we don't explore. We're going to be doing this for the 60 next floors. So the strategy is not going to change. This is all. This is what it's going to be like the entire time. We're just going to and and then once this time the time starts being like very tight, we're going to add commanders to the mix, right? But right now this is just like the kind of gameplay you should uh, be getting good at. Always be fighting. <clears throat> Sorry. So like right there, I went into this room, pulled the first monster I see. 
I, I don't even care what the monster is, I just pull it. Size very good. And I'm checking all the chests on the way. Just in case I get, like, you know, some freebies. Not gonna kill his Gargoyle. Could I have not killed his Gargoyle and, like, you know, continue going? Yeah. But wh why would I not kill the Gargoyle when now I know that he's right there, you know? Like, I don't have a reason to delay fighting. I just want to fight right away. If Even if my birds are not ready, I just want to be fighting. So next time I'm gonna kill this Manticore. Next, we're gonna be fighting uh, the demon. Next to the knight because he's the he's a proximity monster and he's by the key, so this guy will have to die no matter what. So if we have to kill him. So let's might as well kill him while we still need kill, you know. And uh, we're not exploring. We just kill whatever's in front of us. That's it. He's open, we're gonna use that strength that we found right there, and we go. That's it. Very fast, you know, like just efficient, very fast. Don't need to explore, don't need to take risks. You can look at the time right now, you can you can see the time is really good, right? Like, we're, this is why I'm saying that if people, they, if, if you're having time issues on this set, like you're doing something very wrong. When I, and I hope by seeing this, this VOD and kind of like my thought process, it will help you uh, pinpoint exactly like what's going wrong. Uh, so this is a no item floor, but this is this is why we pick water. It's because no item, we don't care about it. So we, when we get no item, we just press run tuition instead of it. And run tuition is basically like more than enough heals to make up for it. So we still don't know where the key is. We're gonna be fighting whatever's in the way and just while we're slowly nudging our way towards the key. While we're checking the chests on the way, though, in this case, there's no item, so... So that guy's a patrol, let's take care of it. Just make sure it's not in my way later. Uh, he's gonna do scream after a little bit, we're just gonna stun, so we don't have to run super far. You, you do have time to run away, it's just like, you know, you have a stun, so might as well use it. We still don't know where the key is, I'm gonna pull this knight while I'm exploring. So now I have to decide if I go this way or this way. I'm gonna do this, this way first. For no particular reasons. So by the way, <clears throat> sorry, if you want to know if you're on a good time or not, I would say the baseline you want to use is 6 minutes per floor. So if you did a floor in under 6 minutes, you're on a, on a good time. If you did it above 6 minutes, you're on a bad time. Uh, so right now, you, you can obviously see that we're on a good time. Because like, 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. If we were on a normal time right now, we would be at 20, we would be at 36 minutes left. We basically have nine more minutes. So unfortunately, this is the kind of floor where the key is really far. 
So this is where we're gonna like we we still gonna kill whatever is in the way, but we want to like try to avoid fighting because now we have no value in fighting. This means we're gonna be hugging the walls and just kind of checking out. So there is the key, and we just go. If the if if I was unlucky and it happened to be the other room, I would, we would just have had to backtrack. But that's that's just orangey at this point. Okay, we just pull whatever is in front of us. Patrols are priority, so we kill the patrol. <clears throat> this patrol is proximity, by the way. So, it, like, in addition to being a patrol, it, since it's proximity, you probably want to kill it first. Proximity monsters are always the most important to kill. Because they are the most likely to be in your way. Uh, later. This knight is also proximity. <clears throat> now I'm gonna pull this boot while I'm moving. If you if you if you actually do need to move a long distance like I am right now. Uh, still pull a monster, but just spam your range move while you're moving, right? We have a free flight there. And we got unlucky that he's not there, so we, now we can actually come back there. And we're, we're doing all that while we have this monster uh, that we're fighting at the same time. So we're, just, we're getting like basically free damage there. By the way, this is the last set. This is the last set where there is a risk of hitting traps when you're uh, when you're hiding the walls. On the next set, it's actually going to be even easier to hide the monsters because next set there's a we know like where the wall traps are exactly. Wait, the key's there. Now we can just kill. This is the fourth kill. Let's pull this one next. No, let's pull this one actually. Because he's, he's near a chest. So if there's something that might be blocking my way to this chest, it's gonna be this guy. Might as well get rid of it. This guy is a sight monster, by the way. And it's open. We check this real quick. Fortune, we don't care because we already kill all we need. So we go. Nice landmine. So like right now, the good a good time since it's six minutes per floor and we did five floors. If we are above thirty, we're in a good place. If we're below thirty, we're in a bad place. So we are eleven minutes ahead right now. So like we. We for sure will not have time issues on this. Impossible. That's not even considering all the free stuff we're gonna find. So patrol first. And I, I would say we're getting unlucky on the key locations as well. The keys have been kind of like in four rooms. So you see the say we right now getting cast. This is the succubus. The, the very annoying monster on this set. This uh, this girl. She will spam you with like that uh, when when you're near. When you're near. Uh, and they will... These these EOEs tend to put you in bad situations. So you do... because But you, tank, you, you can tank the EOE on the tank. It, it doesn't hurt that much, right? So if you're fighting a monster, it's, it's actually probably a good idea to just tank the EOE. Instead of like moving.
Wait, okay, that ghost is a respawn. We're gonna kill it. <clears throat> nope, we're actually gonna deal the circuits now. Because the ghost is going away. So this guy, she, uh, she does a new we call Dark Mist. You don't want you don't want to stand inside of this because this will CC you. After this, she does a thing called Void Fire. You can actually tank this. Uh, it doesn't hurt that much. But a Dark Mist, you need to avoid it. Absolutely. And we're open. We have another free strength. Yay! And we go, just like that. So we have bad debuffs. It doesn't matter because we're first we're warrior. Second we have buffs. Third we have time. So there's there's this these debuffs don't matter at all. We're just gonna still do this for normally. Now now let's say you were on this floor and your time was bad. Let's say right now you were at 20 minutes left. What, were you be, what would be your options? First, your, your options would be using a strength, but we already have a strength running. Uh, so your options would probably be, be, you'd be looking at using a flight for the next one, if you were on a bad time right now. But you should not be on a bad time on this set. If you're on a bad time on this set and you have to use flight and stuff like that on water, and it's, it's like we were talking earlier, like it's not so much that you're not using your palms, it's that you're doing something else wrong in, in your play style. And you would have to fix this. <clears throat> so I'm gonna stun the Dark Mist just for uptime. We can tank this, no issue. So I'm gonna kill this guy while I'm moving. Another strike. He's not there. He's there. Okay, so we just kill everything there. <clears throat> that should be enough. So this dragon doesn't do much. He does a, a gaze that he's actually a cone, so you can be behind it and look at it. And he'll follow this up with a big cone. He just step out of it. That's it. So this is a circular AoE. This guy's a respawn, by the way. Respawn on the key. That can just happen. Uh, we're gonna kill this one because he's the one that's the closest to the key. He's the most likely monster between the succubus and himself to be in the way. So something I did not mention yet. Uh, one of the privileges you have on tank is that you're actually able to check chests while you're fighting monsters because you, you are tanky enough to be fighting like a mimic plus something else. So that's 
if you were playing on DPS job there, you would kill the monster first, then check the chest. On DPS, you can uh, cheat a little bit and you can check the chest while you're fighting the monster. Most of the time, anyway. He's open. Perfect. So this, this chest over there was a strength. We'll get it before we leave. If you're, by the way, if you're running to a room and you're scared, you might hit a trap or you're fighting a monster. Something you can do is, is use a potion, use a regen potion before you go inside the room. This way, if you hit a trap, it's probably going to be fine. <clears throat> Though it wastes a potion, of course, so. Damn, my throat's starting to hurt. I've been talking too much. I should probably get some more water after this set. Okay, we're gonna try and dodge her. If she if she sees us, it's not the end of the world. Like I said, we have so much time that like we basically have twenty three minutes to do two floors. So another no item, but we are warriors, so we don't care. Gravekeeper is just a bait patrol that hits pretty hard. That's it. You know, I think the best way I would put it for the always be fighting role, I would say whenever you're done fighting a monster, give yourself five to ten seconds to pull the next one. You know, like you you have five to ten seconds of doing whatever you want, but after this, you must be fighting something else. I think that's a good role to have. Well, assuming you still need keys, right? You still need kills. I mean. So for example, there I'm gonna like make sure I'm not in the trap, in the way of the trap, and I'm gonna pull like some. That's the Moon OST from Final Fantasy IV. Huh, I don't know, I've never played it. In fact, I've only played... Uh, I think I've only played Final Fantasy II? Two? two and five. No, only five. I've only played five, really. And 14, of course. So we still don't know where the key is. Doesn't matter, we're just gonna pull... Okay, we saw the key. Key's there, we can, we can see a little bit. So 5 to 10 second roll, we're gonna pull something. This is a treasure room. Um, now we don't really want to be standing these EOEs because there's multiple succubus. Which means that like it looked like one EOE but it, it's maybe more, you know, so... So yeah, the, the fighting these succubus when there's a lot of them around, it is is it, it is uncomfortable, you know, so but it's not too bad. Because it 
you would die from like multiple AoEs, not just one or two. Just, it's better to get it than it is to like panic and run into a room and then pull like five monsters. So just gotta just gotta wait in your options. <clears throat> Wow, still not open. Oh, so there, like, there I did exactly what I, I was talking about. I tried dodging the EOE too hard, and which made me step inside a room, and then I pulled the, the other circuits by mistake. That, that's just things that are gonna happen on this set, no matter what. Just gotta be ready for it. So as you can see, when I, when I when I see the pressure like kind of fighting up, I rotate my defenses. It's not really something I I don't really mention it as I'm doing it. What you're gonna notice, I'm like just rotating my defenses one after another. Now we're gonna have to kill this one. This is just unfortunate because this is a, a treasure room with the key. But like time is so good that it doesn't really matter yet. And that's a respawn in my face. Very nice. This Gravekeeper, by the way, he is sound, so if you walk past him, he's not gonna notice you. So this is the last floor before the boss. If we find a free strength or a free steel on this floor, I'm actually going to not use it until we go to the boss. So there's a steel, the key is also there, so we just kill everything around there. There's really nothing much else to say about the gameplay, like the, the play style, at least on these lower floors, well, on these lower, higher floors where we don't need commanders for time. Really, it's just fight nonstop. I, 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 I would, I'm really trying to show off like how little time you should be wasting between poles <clears throat> and how much like you, you really don't want to explore very much. Like just just get whatever is around you and and get out. That's it.
could could technically use the loss to speed up the monster a little bit, but <clears throat> we don't really need to, so. tips for astro on this set so astro is like very freaking hard on this set uh i mean really you want to you want to do as you said you want to try to full explore on astrologian but did like you said there's a risk of the trap though i would i will say it's fine if you blow most of your safeties on this set because you're not going to need the safeties uh that much above 150. So what you can do is you can help yourself with uh, using a lot of safeties and you could probably use also like one or two sides of your, your own things. That means you would only have to deal with uh, four to six floors where you don't have safety or raising active. Wow, the key is actually a very high kill. <clears throat> This is the playing like something like Astrologian is definitely like much different than playing something like Water. It's the total opposite. But because on something like Astrologian, you're gonna be uh, you want to explore as much as possible because like you don't, you cannot clear with your pumps. You need more. On water, it's the opposite. Like on water, you can't clear with your pumps. Like I, I actually don't need to pick up anything else. I can't clear with this. So. Because of this, it means that I know I don't need to explore. I, I can just get by with whatever I find on the way. So, so we're gonna find the we're gonna go get the free steel I found. So there's a trap there. That was a free steel. So this boss, um, highly recommend you strength steel. Also, highly recommend you lost. Though the loss of this boss, you can do it at a specific time. That makes life easier. I'm gonna show you. This is this is not a hard boss. This is uh, you just need to know what you're doing. But this is not hard. So this will be still strength and lost. It will probably die before I lose my buffs. So this is around eight to nine minute fight on warrior. Assuming you use one strength, one loss, one steal. So here's how you do it. First, you strength. We do not lost yet. We're gonna lost later into the fight. Uh, up, uh, up to this point, we just, uh, you know, just play normally. So what she does is she's just gonna cast a bunch of AoEs. Void Fire will just do damage to you and not a lot of damage. So you can't face tank this one. First thing she does is she summons this add that will do a line AoE on you. And then she's gonna do Dark Mist. Dark Mist is a hard CC, so don't get hit. Second thing she does, she's gonna spawn four zombies. So this part is important. She's gonna spawn four zombies. Do not stand in the corner, just stand there. You keep doing damage to her. Okay, now go in the middle. She's gonna do a line AoE on you. Stay in the middle, that's important. Stay in the middle. Make sure the zombies all come to you. Use a defensive or two and AoE down the zombies. She's gonna do some AoE on you. It will hurt you, it will not kill you, so you don't care. Then you just keep using AoE GCDs until the zombies are dead. And then she's gonna do Dark Mist, but the zombies are gonna be dead before the Dark Mist. So next thing she's gonna do is the, add, the Succubus add. Hold it to you, use your defensive, and go in Lust. And now, try to get as many Lust off on, as you can on both monsters. You can tank the Void Fire if you want. Mm. 
the only thing you cannot get hit by is Dark Mist. If you see something called Dark Mist getting cast like this, just move. That's it. And as soon as she eats the add, uh, you can quit your Lost and just keep doing that. That's pretty much it. That, that's pretty much it for the fight. That's the way you use the Lost to do the most uh, most damage because basically this Lost is like a double effective Lost because you're hitting both the monster and the uh, the boss. What she does, by the way, the ad is she the ad just stays alive for like 30 seconds and it does damage to you. Then after the boss eats the ad, getting one to one HP back. So like. Basically, whatever damage you do to the ad is like damage you're doing to the boss, so that's how it works. So next is the zombies. Don't stand in the corner. She's gonna void fire. You can face tank this if you wish, but you can just also dodge. Just dodge. Go in the middle. Go across her for the AoE. Stay in the middle. Don't panic. Use a defensive. Now you start to AoE with whatever you have left. You don't even need Berserk for this. You're gonna eat some AoEs, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. The only one you don't want to get hit by is this Dark Mist. But everything else, it doesn't... Like, it doesn't CC you or anything. So. The next thing she does is uh, this add. Now this time we don't have loss. So we, when you don't have loss, it's just... You, you ignore the add, basically. Because wh whatever damage you do to the add is damage you would have done to the boss anyway. So it doesn't matter which one you want that. If you wish, you can stun the add. Uh, it will work. It, it means it won't be doing damage to you for a little bit. That's enough. Void fire, you can face tank if you want. Next thing she's doing is the line AoE plus add with the uh, dark mist, so you don't want to stink that. Next is the zombies, don't be in a corner. Bait the circle somewhere. Go back to the middle. Wait for the line AoE. Go across. Stay in the middle. Use a defensive. Uh, AoE down the zombie. You're gonna get hit by something. It's fine. You can even get hit by this if you want. The only thing you don't want to get hit by is this Dark Mist. Next is the Succubus add. Just ignore it. So she should die next, um, before the next add. So no issues on time. Uh, also, from this point on, I'm going to try and say how much time the bus takes when I with with what I use. It's gonna be a good baseline for if you want to make sure that you have enough time to do the boss, you can just look at the VOD and just go with my times. Alright, don't be in the corner for the zombie spawns. Be in the middle. Go across. Stay in the middle. Pop a defensive.
You're gonna face tank two or one AoE. But it's fine, you just don't wanna face tank the Dark Mist. And she should die. So this took, uh, I believe, seven minutes. Let me see, let me see when my strength goes down below one, just so I can make sure the time is right. Yeah. Okay. So this was around seven minutes. Seven minutes strength still lost, but I have to say the lost was optimal. The more the more optimal your lost is, the, the it's gonna reduce the time significantly. I would say if you're it's the first time you do this. Um, I would say expect 9 minutes on this boss. With 1 loss, 1 strain, 1 steal. If, if you're pretty comfortable with the fight and you, you're comfortable in your skill, 7 minutes. If you're not, 9 minutes. That sounds fair. Alright, uh, let me be right back uh, just like 1 minute. I'm gonna go get some water because my throat is killing me. So, 1 second. I'll be, be right back. <laughs> Oh, I'm back. Sorry about that. Oh, thanks for the follow. Zed Seal. Very nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, without lust. So, there is no reason you should have no lust to use on this fight. So, I'm not even sure what time would... Um, because you gotta remember... The boss before this one, the, the 130 boss... Sorry, the 140 boss, you don't even use a lust for it. You use a resolution. So that means you have 20 floors to find lost. There is no reason you should do 150 without a lost. Zero. If you... Um, well... Let me rephrase. There is no reason you should be doing this boss without a loss if it's your first clear and you're trying to clear on a warrior. Always lost. No excuse. So... So it's just not realistic to, do the, to, to have a time without loss because it's just never gonna happen. Though if I if I had to to throw a number like an estimate, probably without the loss you're looking at probably ten minutes, ten thirty, something like that. But there there's no reason you should not have a loss there. I mean even even if you love to waste your your commanders, there's like it's hard to waste lust. It's really hard to waste lust. Okay, so next set. <clears throat> the pretty floors. This set is actually easier than the last one in my opinion. So, cannot be that bad. Okay, so Shapti doesn't do really, doesn't do much. He does a, he, he does a, a line Yui that's really fast, but it's, it, it won't even kill you if it hits you. So it doesn't matter. Just don't be inside of it. Uh, Pudding, it kind of hurts in melee range. But it's not that bad. It's just like kind of, kind of the tank, kind of monster that hurts really. It hurts a lot, but you're a tank, so you kind of don't care. Uh, same for Deepai as a big tank buster, but it's not too bad on tank. 
Gremlin does nothing. Uh, pot kind of hurts, but also it does the gaze mechanic. You have to make sure you turn around because if you look at it, you're gonna get blinded and hit for like a pretty, uh, pretty strong damage. Um, the Marolith is as, as a bait tank buster, and also he has a, he does an EW that stun you. Make sure you don't stand inside of it. Uh, the Abaya doesn't do anything. He, he has like a kind of a, a pseudo enrage that he does if you're in combat, I think, for 45 seconds, but it's you rarely see it, and even if he does it, it does, he still doesn't do damage, so whatever. Um, Devilette is actually easy on tank. You just have to understand the monster well, but it's an easy monster to fight on tank. Just, just understand that if you mess up fighting this guy, he does get ice spikes up. It's gonna reflect damage back to you when you hit it, so that you kind of want to chill if you fail to stun him during that part. Uh, Soul Flare is a bad monster, not even because he's that like he doesn't hurt that much on tank. It's because he keeps healing himself when you're fighting him, so like you end up wasting a lot of time. The, this you kind of want to avoid this guy if possible, just for time. Uh, just to save time. Taurus doesn't do anything. Archdemon is an annoying patrol that is proximity. Would put, will put a 30 second paralyze on you. That is very annoying to deal with. You can though, though you can stun it at the very specific time to avoid it. I will try to show it up when I fight this. Thing. But he's a proximity patrol, so like us are, you're gonna have to fight him no matter what. Uh, Mimic still don't really matter, and the rare just so scroll. And yeah, so actually, surprisingly, there's not that much on this set. So also, starting from now... If you like money, I recommend you using Twitchens. The, the, the set I'm, I'm on right now is going to be the easiest set to get bags from. So might as well, you know, get some money. So we're just fighting whatever is in front of us. So this chapter he does very fast line anyways, just make sure you don't stand in it. That's it. Yeah, sure, I'll use that. She's right there. Okay, so we're just fighting non-stop. We're gonna fight the deep eye after. I, I would say starting from now is when the monsters they start to do a little more real damage. Definitely want to keep eyes on your on your health. Though n nothing should kill you 1v1, if, as long as you're paying attention. Just as long as you're paying attention. Just, just don't zone out when you're fighting things, and you should be able to, to kill everything without using potions. Just like with run. So the pudding, when you pull it, is gonna run up to you. Then it's gonna... Then from this point on, it will never run up to you again. So if you're fighting him as a tank, you, you kind of want him to run to you at a good spot, right? Because you don't you don't want him to be stuck in the middle of a room where you can't reach him. So on this set, time time should be a little tighter than the last set. But something important to remember that is that starting from now on, it is almost always safe to run around the walls. There are only three spots with wall traps, and when I see them, I will uh, I will show them up. But this means that it's very easy to kite a monster. Like I, for example, if 
I know there's zero risk for me to hit a trap on this wall because there's just no wall trap, right? So, and I draw the side, so <laughs> that's even better. But like, there's there's no risk of wall traps outside of a few specific walls, which I will show up. So this is the fifth monster. It's probably not going to open with five. So let's go get some more. This is a toad trap. Yeah, th by the way, the deep eye does like a cone side gaze thing, but it's it's such a ridiculously small like range that I, I've never gotten it by it. I, I don't even know what it does. I think it paralyzes you or something. He's open, so we can just go. We don't explore, we just go. Don't care about the chests. Though I don't remember what that was, so let me check. Oh, that's another site. Nice. So we're out of the first floor in under five minutes with no pumps, and we killed six monsters. That should tell you, like, that time is just probably not going to be an issue on this set. As long as we kill everything between the key and us, and don't waste time, time is unlikely to be an issue. It, time could be an issue only if we get very bad debuffs and we get like no freebies to make up for it. But I, I would say this is very unlikely. Like we already got one. We already got an altar there. So. Alright, so just pull anything and fight it. So it's, it's maybe not obvious what I'm doing, by the way, when I, you know, like sometimes I just kind of like stop fighting the monster and I move with it. It's whenever I need, I know I will need to move. Then I just combine the, the damage thing with the moving. So like, for example, right there, I know I saw the key, the key's there. Now I don't really need to carry the monster anymore. I just, now I just fight nonstop until the key's open. It's only until I find the key that it's, you kind of need to like see what's up, but also be fighting at the same. So this is only the third kill. It should not open with this. So this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine kills nearby. Could be more than enough to check this, uh, to get this key open. So now what I'm gonna do if it doesn't open with this kill, which it, it's probably not going to, I'm going to pull a deep eye over there and fight it. And I'm also going to use that time to check this chest. If this chest is a mimic, I'm just going to make sure I use my defensive as well. I could even steal if I was like very stupid. So it's not open, we're going to pull this deep eye while we're checking this chest. For sanity, we don't really care. 
debuff. Well, I mean, we we do have a debuff, but it's just not a not a very noticeable debuff. Now we're gonna go to the key. Still not open, gonna pull the pudding while I'm checking this chest. Alteration, uh, we already have an alteration running, so we don't need to refresh. It's open, we're out. So, so far it's five minutes per four. With no pumps. No pumpers uh, have helped us so far. So this one is aced. Mimics are not bad to fight on tank. They, they do take a little longer to kill, but they they provide a higher chance to drop a chest, so it's kind of a kind of works out. Gonna check this chest as well. Oh, fortune. That's nice. Sorry, I had my mic by accident. So I, I know uh, I know that he's not back there. I, I checked with my uh, I checked with my eyes. I like, did not physically go to the room, but I, I just saw it with my eyes. There was no key there. So for this guy, you just want to make sure you turn around when he does the tank. Outside of that, he's, he has a tank buster, but it doesn't hurt that much. So I, I just want to stress this point. I, I did briefly mention it earlier. So when I'm saying you should always be fighting, this means, let's say that right now, so look, I see that he's there, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wait for this guy to turn around before I go. Even though I still need kills, I'm gonna wait. What, what I'm doing right now is this is not what I wanna do. Right now what I'm doing is I'm wasting my time. I, I don't want to wait for monsters to move. If I still need kills, and a monster is in my way, I just kill the monster. Simple as that. I, I don't want to be wasting 15 seconds just so I can get a little closer. It's not It's not worth my time. Just want to be fighting. If you constantly wait for monsters to move, you're going to be bleeding time. What you, will, what, you want to, what you want to be doing is you want to wait for monsters to move sometimes. You want to move, but while you're fighting something already. So now I'm gonna pull this spot because he's a proximity monster, the most likely monster to be in the way of the key.
Oop, I keep hitting the wrong button. So like, let's say for example, I was fighting this guy and the key was over there and I really want to go. I would just, I'm looking at this DeFi while I'm fighting this one. So this way, if he ever moves, then I go, you know, like that. Now I would go now. So, so like I'm combining fighting the monster with waiting for another monster to move. I'm not just doing one or the other. That, that's the way you like make sure you save time instead of having to wait around. But odds are, if you if you have to wait at, at any point, it's because you messed up. We have a flight, very good. And we are in five minutes again. Five minutes again, and we have no help from commanders again. We have no strength. We have a. We have not had a strength a single time yet. Now, now this is the first floor where we have actual Pomander help because we have a flight. No item, this is why we picked Warrior. This no item doesn't matter. Wait, so I don't know where the key is yet. I'm probably gonna I'm gonna explore this way first. Because there's a patrol coming my way anyway, so I might as well take care of it at the same time. Oh, the key's right there. Okay, so perfect. We're just gonna kill everything there. This is flighted, so this is gonna be between two to seven kills. But it's likely to be uh, three to four, so. Ah, so this is, this is one of the rooms with a with a a trap on the wall, and this is this is the hardest one to to like notice because this room looks like a lot of rooms. So my my tip, knowing that this room has a wall trap, like the, my tip to recognizing this room, you see the metal is like this kind of pattern of rocks. And it looks like some, some sand fell on the rocks, right? Also, you, you can recognize this wall on the left. This is a very, like... You're gonna see this room a lot. There's a lot of rooms that look like this room. This is what I, I want to say. But this one specifically, it looks like some sand piles fell on the middle. When you look up, you're gonna see that there's a bunch of rocks about to fall on there. And this is where the sand is coming from. So we call this the danger room because there's a bunch of rocks about to fall on your head. And for the danger room, there is a wall trap on this wall somewhere. That means that if you are the wall on the left there, there is a chance that there's a, a, a trap on this wall that you cannot avoid. I'm gonna put a marker of about, uh, about where it is after I kill this guy. So this is one of the rooms that you need to know. You, you need to know that there's sometimes a wall trap. I believe it is around there. So you want to make sure you don't step there. Uh, also, another tip for this room in particular, I will give you another tip. Uh, also, this room, this one, it's always connected to the danger room. There's a trap that is like, it's not a wall trap, but there's a trap like very close to this corner. 
As long as you are the corner, you should not hit the trap. But it's very close. Just letting something to keep in mind. Uh, so yes, another thing about this room, that this this room that we call the danger room, because there's salt piles falling in the middle with this wall there, and there's rocks about to fall. So the danger room, a trait, there's a wall trap there, which means sometimes you're just not able to sneak past. You can actually wall down the middle of this room. If you wall down the middle, there is no traps in this like middle part. But you have to make sure you walk through the middle. So that's just a little trick to help you navigate uh, through this room. This is one of three rooms that have wall trap. I will show off the two others when I see them. This room is the second one with a wall trap. We spawn inside of it, so there's no traps right now. There's a trap around there sometimes. Which means if you try to hug this right wall, you're gonna hit the trap. Easy way to, to dodge this trap. You can see this kind of pattern, like there's, there's like the rocks, like they're circling the spot. You can dodge this trap easily if you do this. If you just follow like the edges, you will never hit this trap and there's no traps in this path that I'm walking right now. So just something to keep in mind for this room. This is the second room with a wall trap. Uh, it would be kind of nice if we saw the third room on this set. Why? What I still have time to show it, you know? And the way you remember this room is is just like there's no, there's not really a trick to remember this room because it looks it's a very uh, unique looking room. So when whenever you see this, you should recognize it. By the way, pulling whatever is close to me. Don't want to lose any time. And there we go, For first free strength. The key's there, so I saw the key right there. It means we just need to kill everything around. And we can go after. I'm gonna make sure I kill the patrols first, just to make sure I don't run into issues with them uh, later. So you, you see this chest like all the way back there, but this is what I mean by we don't explore on the on water. We just keep, we just take whatever chest is, uh, whatever chest is close to us, and that's it. So in my opinion, this chest is too far. Running to there and like coming back would take a good like twenty seconds. I don't think it's worth it. You just kind of kind of go.
Ah, the key's open. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Oops. Well, if if I did not pull this guy, we would have been out of there already. I would have just went inside the key and that. Uh, this this donut room in particular has some annoying uh, chest inside of it. Uh, whenever a chest is in the middle of the room, there, there's if there's a risk you're gonna hit a trap whenever you go check the chest. In in our case, we're not gonna risk it. We're just gonna go. So right now we're we are around six minutes ahead of time. So time is not an issue. there we go that's that would that's the first of what i would call almost unplayable debuff now you could serenity this honestly it would be not a bad call to serenity this but we have a strength running which kind of offsets it a little bit so in this case i think it's fine to just fight this normally but this would be if if right now you were like behind on time, you would serenity there. <clears throat> but right now we are six minutes ahead. Well, now we're five. We have a lot of leeway, right? So we can actually afford to do this uh, slowly. And the key's also right there. I do have a Lust, which I can use. So this is a very specific thing, by the way. But when you Lust, it's it's going to remove the Gloom defense buff. So it's like even better. Oh. I'm just gonna make use of that last. Since, like I said, it removes the buff, uh, the damage, uh, the reduction buff on the monsters. Might as well use it. Fixed is good. So by, by the way, we do lose run cushion and no ability, which means we, we do have drain potions to make up for it. If you get the combination of no ability plus no item, then you kind of need to center it most of the time. But this is the only combination that we really kill as warrior. By the way, I'm I'm avoiding the soul flares at all costs there because the, the soul flares are going to take a, a long time to kill. So you really don't want to be fighting one impossible. It's definitely worth your time to take like an extra 
five to ten seconds to find something else rather than fighting the soul player. And we're open. Perfect. Another thing that I also... Can I sneak past you? This guy's proximity, by the way. Yeah, almost. Whatever. Another, another thing I did not mention is that most of the time you're gonna see that I don't wait. I don't wait to see if the monster move, like, recently. I just go. Because it's... More often than not, you're gonna have time to squeeze past. And like, even if it fails, I don't know, like one time out of 10, you're still saving time overall. So I'm, I'm just not a fan of waiting for monsters to move. Uh, what you can do is you can also combine both things. So like, for example, I'm fighting this Marolid right now, but I did see the Soulfire move. So I can just... Now I know it's safe to do this, you know? Even if I'm currently fighting this monster, I know it's safe to do this. Just first, I know I'm not gonna hit any traps, because there's no wall traps in this room. And second, this guy had moved, so I know I was safe. So this was a pretty disgusting floor, but we still made it out of there on a good time. It took around uh, 6 to 7 minutes, I think. He's right there. So, so this is a floor with a bunch of patrols. When you get a floor like that, hurry up, take one side and kill the patrol. Like just hurry up, take one side. Don't wait in the spawn room like... Because if you wait in the spawn room, you're gonna get sandwiched. And just you're just gonna waste your time. So just hurry up to kill something. If you hurry up to try and kill something and you like... It doesn't work out and everything ends up converging your way. Then witching, you know? Like it's fine to just witching in this case. So I saw this imp moved while I was fighting the Merylid, so now I know I, I can't go check this chest while I'm waiting. So I'm gonna fight an imp to show you what it's like. The imp has two dangerous casts, he's, he's gonna do ice fights. Uh, about two to three casts into the fight, this, his next cast is gonna be ice fights. And after ice fights, he will do uh, Void Blizzard. So what you want to do is you want to stun one and interrupt the other. Usually what I do is I stun the first and interrupt the second. So we're just going to wait for Ice Bites. There, stun this. As soon as my stun ends, I want to interrupt the Void Blizzard. That's trying to... This thing. This will put a huge slow on you. So as long as you do these two things, these guys are easy. If you mess up and you forget to stun the uh, Ice Bites, just make sure you stop auto attacking for 5 seconds. Or it's gonna do a lot of damage back. Oh, hello patrols? I was not looking.
Oh, we got a chest drop. So I'm willing to I'm willing to risk a mimic right now. Even if I got a mimic, I know I could just use my defensives to make up for it. We got a free strike. That's nice. So same thing, I will wait for the Ice Spike, which comes after one to two uh, casts. There I, I failed, right. So there I failed. So if I keep auto attacking, you're gonna see I keep getting like it for 2k. So you probably want to stop auto attacking if you fail the Ice Spikes. What's up, Parallax? Just what you needed. You needed this tutorial run for Warrior. So this guy's a respawn. That's us. If he turns around and we fight him, I'll show you what he does. He did not. He, this guy is not really like... There's not, not really much to show. It's just he, he keeps stealing your help, which just makes the fight drag on. We have a steal, that's always nice. This is Danger Room, the room I was talking about earlier. I can tell because the middle, the stones with the little salt piles that came from the top, the rock's about to fall, and this wall. This means that there's a wall trap on this on this wall sometimes. By the way. Uh, there's nothing dangerous about this set. Yeah, no, no, there's a few monsters that are... Well, they're, like, they're not really dangerous in the sense that they would kill you one shot. It's just there's maybe a couple of monsters that could uh, take you off guard. But yeah, I agree. There's not really anything that would kill you outright. Except maybe the Arch Demon, uh, when we see it. Arch Demon is probably the most dangerous thing. Yes, that's correct. So the... So what we, um, someone made a video about all the trap locations for deep dungeons. Uh, so, and this person gave the rooms names so we could remember, remember them easily. And we call this room the danger room. And the reason we call it the danger room is about, is because the rocks that are about to fall on your head. And you know, they're dripping salt in the middle of there. And this, this room so happens to have a wall trap there. Sometimes. It's not always, but it has a wall trap there sometimes. So we're gonna stun the ice spikes. There. Then we're gonna interrupt the void blizzard after the stun. It's why I like to stun first, by the way, because then if you stun first, it's easier to time your interrupt after. Yeah, all well, all the rooms, uh, all the rooms per year have names. It's just you, you only need to remember the ones with wall trap, but like every single one of these rooms have names. For example, this one, uh, this one's called uh, Boobies. This one's called Booby Cave. I am not even kidding. That's the name they have. 
but these don't have wall traps so it's not it's it's very not important if you're a new player trying to to, uh, to clear on the first time if you're just trying to clear for your first time you don't need to remember the name of any room you just need to know the wall traps so i'm actually going to fi fight this uh, soul player here i guess it'll show you what he does he just casts water a bunch then he's gonna do mind blast a targeted circle on himself then after that he's gonna start stealing my health Okay, I'm gonna use that strength because I don't think I want to come back there. So might as well use it now. So I did say I was not gonna fight Soul Flares, but like in this case, the, all the other monsters are really far, so I, I'm just gonna fight the Soul Flares there. Uh, time, by the way, as you can see, time is not an issue at all. We're gonna make it to the boss with more than enough time to do it. I would say, starting from this set, you, you get to decide if you want to strength the boss or not. Usually, if you have time to, don't strength the boss. If you don't have time, strength the boss. Though you do have to know like all on the bus takes, of course. So we're finishing this up with pretty bad buffs. But we're warrior, and warrior doesn't care. Unless it's no ability, in which case we do care. So we're gonna have a steal for the bus, that's good. So there, there I did not interrupt the voice spike or the ice spike. Yeah, warrior all in here is about one thing. It's using felt leave uh, every time it's up. That's it. That's the only thing you should be doing for the entire last 50. This is why we're fighting non-stop. We don't even like care too much. We, we don't care about exploring. Un well, we care about finding the key, but that's it. Like Once we found the key, we don't care about exploring at all. The key's right there. There's two more monsters there, and this guy I'm killing is the second one. Uh, that means that we have four monsters, which is not enough to open the key usually, so we're gonna chill more. Uh, wow, I finally get an art demon to show you. So this guy is very tricky. This is the most dangerous monster on this set. I'm gonna show you how to fight one. Okay, I'm gonna show you two ways to fight it. I'm gonna show you the way that would probably happen on you, for you. Uh, so what this guy does is he does a cone like this. Then he's going to turn around and he's gonna do paralyzing. Very fast cast, paralyzing. When you have this on you, stand very close to him and use defensives to survive. Because you want to be able to move as soon as he does the cone. And if you're not close to him, it's possible that you get RNG'd by the paralysis and then it's gonna like get you stunned in the middle of the cone and you just don't have time to, to uh, leave the cone, right? So just stand very close to him whenever you have the paralyzer. As long as you do that, this guy is easy. If you don't do that, then this guy can get tricky. Now, if we fight another one, I will show you a better, well, a better way, but more complicated way to fight one. Uh, unfortunately, I think there's no more, so I can't really show you. But basically, you saw how, how the, the paralyzed was at a very fast cast. You can actually stun the monster during that cast, it, but like you need to do it. Uh, you need to know when it's coming to do that. And if you do that, you don't get paralyzed. So 
So very simple, this boss, if I don't strain, should take around 9 minutes if I lost. So right now we just we just care if we get to the boss with below 9 minutes or not. If we have more than 9 minutes, we can just lost, then we don't have to strain. If we get it there with below 9 minutes, then we don't have to strain lost. Resolution, I have a free resolution there. Resolution is more damage than you can you can do, even on an undead, but it's I guess I can show you, right? And, uh, you can just use a potion, use your defensives, and then go inside your reso. It will actually do a pretty good chunk of damage. If you find a free one, you know, so. But this is doing about 2000. Yeah. About 2,000 if I compare it to my actual damage, you can see that it's much more, right? If I do a felt leave, it's about... it's not even 2,000. Of course, we can get mimics inside of chests. I feel, I feel like that's been a really long time since we saw one. By the way, if you ever feel stressed about fighting a specific monster on the, starting from 150 plus, just drink potions. Like, I'm, I'm intentionally not drinking potions unless I need to. It's because I, I'm very comfortable against the monster. So we're out. That means we have enough time to do the boss using uh, nothing. I'm probably still going to lost because why not, but... Like I said, lost is a very... It has very little value on normal clears, so you really want to lose just every boss, just to save you something. So we have a steal going to the boss, this is nice. It's trying to save me potions. I could do this boss with no steal, but it's, it would cost me potions, so... Ah, perfect, this is the other wall traps that was I was missing. So this is the third and last wall trap. It, it's around there. Let me actually kill the, uh, the monsters so I can show it off better. So yes, there's a wall trap on the right there. That means if I hug the wall there, there's a trap that I cannot avoid. You can avoid it uh, by doing kind of like what we did in the second uh, wall trap room. If you do something like this, you will avoid it. There is no traps uh, where I'm stepping right now. If you do this, you're fine. Well, that is, that is all the wall traps. We actually saw all the wall traps. Very good. So outside of these three slots, these three spots, uh, outside of these three spots, as long as you're in a wall, you will never hit a trap on this uh, on the the five last sets, basically. 
Come to know us, this guy. We don't need to stream. This should take around 10 minutes. Maybe even 9. So this guy is exactly like this, the floor 60 boss, except everything he does, does way more damage. So you really don't want to be stepping inside puddles, and you really don't want to be stepping inside of uh, Eus as well. This puddle hurts a lot. You, re you really want to be out of this as soon as possible. Uh, is Warrior a solid pick in Evan on High? Yes, very solid. So by the way, you can get knocked out of these. You can get knocked in like between two uh, things like this. If you're in a tight spot. Uh, yes, Warrior is amazing in Evan on High. Very strong there. It's, it's probably the best job in Evan on High. So if you're in a bad spot and you you're like you don't want to get knocked, you can arms line. If you arms line, you will not get knocked back. So just something to keep in mind. Yeah, Ron Tushin is just very strong. Though I would say in Evan on High, in Evan on High, like all the tanks are really good. Except like maybe Paladin is a little light in behind, but all the other tanks are pretty good. In PUTD, I feel like the, the edge goes to Ward due to Ron Tushin, which is just so strong. I don't know if I don't think Paladin feels that bad in Evan on High. It feels kind of bad in PUTD. I don't think it feels that bad in Evan on High. It does have low damage, but that about, that's about it. As far as my complaints go about about Paladin. Yeah, pretty much what Parallax said. Though, to be fair, you don't have any release either. But it's... I feel like Ryan Cushion more than makes up for the lack of any release. By the way, this boss is like kind of a good, uh, it's a good point in the run to practice rotating your defensive. Because this boss actually cannot crit, so it's a very constant stream of damage that he's gonna output.
right if you get if you get knocked back slightly into the ewe like i did there you actually have a lot of time to move out you have like a second to move out so it's not as stressful as you would think Yeah, if, if Dark Knight had the Blackest Knight inside of there, inside of PUTD, I, I, I would consider putting it as almost as good as Warrior. So we're, lo we're losing the steel now. Uh, when you don't have steel for, I would say, all the bosses above 150, it's, it's very simple. You're just gonna have to drink potions. So just like get used to drinking potions when you don't have a steel. But as long as you drink potions, it should be fine. Yes, this boss is a lot more... I mean, that's... Honestly, all the bosses in PUTD are much more dangerous on non-tanks. Tanks, they kind of like that. They kind of have that privilege there where they don't, they don't get hurt as much. So I'm gonna arms line there, not get knocked back. All right. So that was the kind of like the, um, I don't know the the training. This is like the training wheel set before we start getting to the actual time issues. Starting from 161 is when you start being maybe pressured for time. Like, like starting from the net set is when we're gonna be looking at commanders a little more instead of just using whatever we find inside of a chest. Uh, let me be right back. Just 30 seconds again, so I can get some water. I'm gonna be right back. Not gonna take long.
sorry about this, I'm back. Alright. Uh, I forgot to mention, but this boss was around... Uh, with no strength and a loss, it was around uh, 9.30 maybe? If I use a strength and a loss, uh, it would have been around 7.30 or so. All right, so let's go. Next set is when we might start running into time issues. We might, we might not, but uh, we might. So that's it's a possibility. So next set, where we're gonna be facing? <clears throat> it's uh, it is uh, one sixty one to one seventy. Uh, so the Tursus is a patrol that is very annoying because it's going to cast um, something at you that you can't dodge, and it's gonna slow down your GCD. A uh, very annoying monster. Try to avoid fighting this if possible. So, Linworm does nothing. Crotch is just a, a very uh, heavy hitting monster that you gotta watch out for. Uh, Sarko does nothing. Waver is a hard hitting monster that you have to watch out for as well. Uh, Vinyar Ragoon is a very bad monster that does basically nothing, so very easy target. Uh, Melodon is not too bad. But he will, he has some kind of like wrench tank buster that he's gonna use a couple times, so you gotta watch out for that. Uh, Archerosaurus is a hard hitting double tank buster monster. Like we, we call these, uh, we call these monsters double auto attackers because basically what they do is they have a tank buster ability. So like they have an ability that just does damage and nothing else. But they, they tend to do that ability and then auto-attack you at the same time. And that's the reason we call them double auto-attackers. But like really, really the reason we call them that is because they have a tank buster ability. So it's just that the tank buster, it can happen at the same time as an auto-attack. Uh, auto and it's usually like that combo that will kill you really fast. But that's more of an issue on DPS jobs. Like we're not... We're not really going to die in one shot to a tank buster monster on tank. It's just something to keep in mind. Uh, the Diplo Crolus does not do much. He does an annoying skill that makes him invulnerable for a couple of seconds, but we can stun it to prevent it. The, the Para Nodden will do a very fast lightning strike on the ground. Just make sure you don't stand inside of it. Triceratop is a very hard hitting monster. This is the most dangerous monster on this set, in my opinion. Uh, you definitely want to be killing these one at a time. If you have multiple, I would heavily consider witching. Uh, rare monster does not do anything. Nothing interesting about the mimic. Okay. So there we go. Ready to go. Food up. And like I said, this is where we might run into time issues. Especially if you're like a new player and you're just, you know, like it's your first time around there, you might run into time issues. I would say a good way to try and avoid the time issues is, uh, I was going to say just strength right away. We, we were lucky so we found a strength, but even if you, if even if I did not find a strength, I would have strength right away. Like just try to do strength right away. Especially if you were already at three strength. So we have to be very optimal with our time there. We're do we're doing we want to kill the bare minimum every floor while we open all the chests on the way. That's it. So right now I can already see the key over there. And we are able to kill five monsters on the way. So we probably have to gonna gonna have to kill a little more. Yes, correct. We don't want to... First priority is fighting monsters at all times. So, it's it's the most important to just pull stuff and start fighting it. Even if your cooldowns are down, just be fighting something. And you, you probably want to be doing the chest, the chest checking at the same time as you're fighting, actually. So...
So this patrol, I, usually I would say kill patrols first. This is actually a patrol I would avoid if possible. If there's too many of them, just kill them. But it, like, there's only one or two, uh, you can avoid them. Because they, they just really suck to kill since they slow down your GCD. And we have a free rage, so might as well use it. This is Ninja Room. You can see it with salt pies in the middle. Rock's about to fall. There is a, a possible wall trap there, but also you can walk straight down the middle of this room and it will be safe. There is no traps in the middle of this room. It's a very good trick to know. Maybe I can show off the wall trap there. Okay, so in this case, I'm lucky there's no wall trap. But there's, there's often a wall trap on this wall, so... Not because you get lucky once that uh, you're gonna get lucky again. So I'm gonna be honest, because of this rage... We, like, we really don't need many lucky pickups on this set, but like, something as big as a rage... Now we're probably guaranteed to make it out of this set with, without using palm energy. Because this set is like you might have time issues, but it for for you to have time issues, you need bad kind of bad luck on debuffs. But like, now we got something really good to offset that. So I would say we're unlikely to run into time issues, but we still want to keep the time in mind. Like all we really need is a bad treasure room in the way that we have to to fight through, and then you know time would be bad again. We got mimics. We don't really care. That's that's better than a normal monster on tank. So I would say starting from this set is where you will you want to respect the mimics a little more. Like it's still not that difficult, but like you definitely don't want to be face tanking a mimic using no defensives and no potions, you know? So this one's gonna put the box on me. That that will happen sometime. Like you're just you're just doing a mimic and then you for for one reason or another you you, you don't get put her up. I just recommend you purity right away when that happens. I see like, you, like your purities are kind of like they're kind of they're gonna fix your mistakes basically with the box. So just use them right away. Uh, update the stream title. I will do that uh, when I'm not fighting something. But I will do that when I'm going to the next one. No rush. They do have higher HP than the other monsters, but it, I think it's worth it to kill them anyway because they have a higher drop rate of chests. Like, I would not go out of my way to fight the Mimic, but if it's in my way, then I would probably fight a Mimic over something else. Let's put it this way. We have another free Rage. I'm not gonna use this one. I don't I don't want to be using Rages non-stop. Uh, it's not gonna be a good representation of uh, the run. So I'm not gonna use this Rage. Now we're just looking for the key that he's there, so we're gonna fight everything that we find. I would say on average you can expect to find one to two raids on each set. On, I think that's a fair average. If you find zero rage on a set, you're actually a, a little unlucky in my opinion. So, you, you should expect to find at least one, sometimes two. If you start finding more than two, if you, if you start seeing like three, then you're, you're, st you're starting to be a lucky bastard. But below three is pretty normal. 
So technically this rage is not that lucky, but I, I want to make sure that I don't, you know, I, I don't want this to be too lucky. So I'm still, I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm just gonna assume I picked up a single rage on this side. It seems more normal. Uh, of course you would use that rage, by the way. Like if you were just trying to care, you would use that rage. So this is one of the room with a wall trap, like I said earlier. There's a wall trap there. A possible wall trap there. Which you can avoid by doing this. If you do this, you will not hit the wall trap. Still not open, we fight more. This is one of the hard hitting monsters. You gotta be careful with this guy. It's not too bad on tank, but like you know, like just just have a defensive up. He, so the way the tank buster monsters work, uh, double auto attackers if you prefer that name, they will usually use their tank buster about five seconds in, into the fight. And then they're gonna use it about every 15 seconds after that. And we're out, uh, maybe? No, we're not. Just keep fighting. This was a rage, but we're not gonna use it. This was this would be seven killed, it might open. It is open. Now like I said, waiting is usually because something went wrong. I have to wait there, I don't like that. I'm not gonna not gonna lie. But well. All right, let me update the stream to 161. Uh, there we go. All right. So we'll just pull anything. So this wiver just moved. I saw it from the corner of my eyes. That means it's it's safe to go this way now. We're gonna use that opportunity to check this chest. It's a rezo, I don't really care. He's there, okay, so we just fight. Now a tip uh, that I did mention a couple times earlier. If you're sitting at 3 strength, it's probably fine to use one, so we're gonna use one there. So, even if time is kinda good right now, we're gonna use one strength, just like, it's gonna make this more uh, safe. Like, if we, if we start getting bad debuffs, then we're gonna have built up, like, a... 
uh, a lot of time to deal with it. And we're setting at 3 strength. Whenever you're setting at 3 strength, it's a very low commitment to just use a strength. That's why I use one there. By the way, I've not been using Tainture's much outside of the bosses. You, There's nothing that prevents you from using a Tainture every time it's up. Like, there's really nothing that prevents you from doing that. I'm just not doing it because I think it's still maybe too... Uh, like, I don't know, like too sweaty for our first clear. You know, if you're just trying to clear, I don't think you should really Tainture every time it's up. But it's nice. It's a nice option to have when you're doing the boss. And time is, time is, is, is really tight. I think if you're just trying to clear for the first time, it's probably better to keep your super potion just in case. Because super potion and tincture say they share the same cooldown. So by the way, I wasn't kidding when I said that um, multi polling is is not is not important on tanks. So like we're doing this entire thing all the way to 200, we we are never going to be doing a multi pole. It's it's just unnecessary for a, a clear. Still not open. It's fine. We're we'll just fight whatever is close. Don't, don't have to be picky with the monsters. You can't fight anything. If it doesn't open with this guy, I would probably fight, you know, one of the Sorcerer over there. I really don't want to fight the patrol if possible. Since it will, it will slow me down with it slow. Oh yeah, we're open. We just go. So time is really good. Remember the six minute roll per set. Right now we're at 45. That means we spent six plus six. Uh, but plus three for the last. So that, like we're three minutes ahead right now, which is really good. So we have another free rage. Luckily this time it's no knockback, so I don't have a I don't have to intentionally send back there, but we're just not going to use that rage. You would probably not use that rage either on the real run, except if you were on in that situation, let's say right now you were in that situation and you had 40 minutes left, so you were like actually behind. I would actually consider using a serenity and using that rage for, uh, for time. That's not out of the question, but I would only do this if you were beyond on time. He's right there. It was hidden behind the, his fat, his fat ass. All right, so we're just gonna kill everything around.
Gotta make sure, like, it's it's easy, like I said, to zone start, like, zoning out because you're fighting a lot of monsters in one v one And then you, you, like, you start paying attention to your health. And then you, like, you get crit by something like a crotch and then you just kind of die. That's something you just, like, make sure you, you're paying a little attention at all times. I know it's very easy to get distracted. Uh, once you get to 170, this is less true. Like, once you start getting to 171+, plus, then you're gonna start fighting monsters that are pretty difficult. Before that, like, there's a few monsters that are kind of boring to fight, so... I'm gonna pull this guy. This is the guy that I said has a wrench tank buster. So it's it's like one of the other monsters that has a tank buster, but this this one he does it in a ranged manner. All it really means is that if you're trying to kite him away, he's he's still gonna hit you with a tank buster. Like that. Still not open. Nice, free strength. Oh, we got kind of unlucky on this floor. We actually had to kill every single monster. That's kind of funny. Yep, this is the, the very last monster on this floor. Well, there's about to be a respawn, but this is the, the last monster that was there initially. What was that again? Rage, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can't use this. That's the respawn, this guy. So right now we're four minutes ahead. Plenty of time. There's a bad debuff, finally. So we just do this normally. So that's where like, that that's the kind of floors where you have to make decisions sometimes. If right now my time was bad, let's say right now I was at 31 minutes, which would be five minutes behind. In this case, I would maybe serenity this. Uh, I would maybe rage this even, or I would maybe consider using a flight on the next floor and then doing this one normally. I could also consider using a strength if I did not already have one running. Lots of options, right? Like, you just have to adjust a little bit. On this set, I would say, like, that you adjust mostly. Now, since we're on a good pace, we don't need to use anything. We just fight this normally. And it's gonna take a little longer, but that's it. Also, the key is right there, which is very convenient. It means we just fight everything around. I gotta watch out though. The monsters, some of the monsters with tank busters, they hurt a lot on the doom floor. Just gotta respect the damage.
like as you can see it's very like it's a very simple game plan on warrior compared to machinist it's it's way less sweaty like you just you just want to be fighting monsters non-stop and it, like all, all the stuff about exploring you know dodging monsters all this is it's kind of not an important on warrior it's all about fighting non-stop Because I know on, on Machinist, you're encouraged to like, you know, like, you know, like, oh, dodge, like, avoid the monsters if possible. And uh, stuff like that. It's not really something that applies to Warriors. Well, we're gonna be avoiding some monsters later, but it's much more rare. So the, the Vinyl Raccoon is a very silly monster because you can actually cheese its AI. I'm gonna show you how. So this guy has two spells. He has a cone he does in front of him. And he has a cone he does behind he does behind him. If you're behind him. So if you go behind him after this, he's gonna do this cone. But if you go back, whenever he does it, he's gonna do it again. And then you, you just kinda see where it's going, right? Like if you just keep doing this, he will spam this. He will never attack you. Well, he'll do this about like 15 times and then he'll resume his auto attacks, but it's, you know, it, it takes a while. It's just a way to save potions and resource. So that is, that is four? No, that is five. This is, this is gonna be the sixth one. not open that's the seven kill which is the average kill count That's a respawn, by the way. Respawn is every five minutes, if I've not mentioned. Starting from 151, the respawn is five minutes. So if you want to track this, which is not a bad idea, an easy, the easiest way to do it, that requires no like third party or anything, is as soon as you zone into a floor, write down in the, in the, in the chat the, the time at the top right. So 24, 25 in this case. So I, I will write down 24, uh, sorry, 3425 in the chat. And then I know that if I subtract five minutes from this time, there will be a respawn app. Uh, the key's right there. So we're just gonna be killing everything on the way again. It'll be a very fast floor. We are around four minutes ahead. So doing really good on that. Uh, safety is pretty good. Means we're not gonna run into a dump trap. Another treasure room.
So this Diplo is gonna do like the Martian thing. Uh, just stun it or interrupt because this will make it invulnerable for like 7 seconds I think, just annoying. Then he does this uh, Petri, uh, sorry not Petri but like it's, uh, I think it paralyzes you or something. You can just walk behind it. Hey, thank you for the sub, Cookie. Second month, very nice. Thank you very much. I appreciate this a lot. Lots of subs today. That's very nice to see. Hope it means people are enjoying the the more like uh, you know like more kind of tutorial oriented run compared to the usual sweat board uh, score runs that we do. I'm going to be honest with you, I, I'm i not used to playing this way. Uh, as surprising as it is, I've almost always done score runs. So like whenever I'm playing just to clear, it, it feels weird to me. Like I know how to do it, it just, it just feels a little weird. But you know, it's like, Warrior is so good right now, it, it has so little resource that it, it needs something. Like someone needed to make a, a guide or like a bot for Warrior specifically. I do I, I do have my note chest run, which I think is, is a really good watch. If you're trying to, uh, to learn about managing time. But it's like... I, I feel like I don't really explain what I'm doing in that bot. Like, it's a good bot to watch, but I, I feel like my I don't explain too much what's going on. So this 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 run I'm doing right now is kind of like uh, kind of like my it's kind of a better version of my uh, no magis uh, no chess run. That's that's the way. I see it. Well, it's the way I want it to turn out. Yeah. Now we do have like, I, I don't really have much to say anymore on this set because we're really just like, it's it's the same strategy as it's been the last set. We just find the key, uh, fight everything on the way, then we fight a little more and then it opens and we go. And uh, like I said, we would have to adjust with our commanders if time was bad, but time is good. So we, it means that I will not need to use anything. Key's there, we fight everything. I'm actually going to fight these monsters first. I'm gonna leave these for last. Now, let's say I was on this floor and time was bad. I would, you would need to use something. I would probably use a strength. If if I was there right now and my time was like kind of bad, like I don't know, let's say my time was 22 minutes, I would strength. If my time was like 20 or lower, then I would probably strength plus flight. I, I would say your challenge going in outside of this set it's fine if you get out of this set with like, you know, like, you know, you're missing a strength or a flight. But I would try very hard to not be missing a rage. I think that's what you're kind of shooting for there. Like, even if you have to use two flights, it doesn't matter. Just try not to use a rage on this set. So if you if you see that you're be bleeding time, uh, like early on, don't wait until the last floor to save your time use like a strength or a flight right away like even if that's for even if you if you're like uh i don't know let's let's say for example you were doing 161 and i i don't know why but let's say 161 took you nine minutes you're not three minutes behind well okay just use a flight right away right like just don't wait that don't wait for that uh three minute that you're behind to like bite you in the ass on 4 169 because if you wait all the way to 4169 to deal with the missing time, your only option is gonna be Rage. That's the only pomander you can use that 
you know, like wins time instantly on this board. So, you know, if you fall behind, use stuff early. I, would, I, I guess that would be my advice, and that especially for this set right there. But as you can see, you're probably not going to run into time issues on this set as long as you're pulling not stop and checking chests uh, on the way. You should expect to find a couple strength, a couple flights, and maybe a rage, which is about what we found. Oh, that's the rare monster. So by the way, you cannot use a witch chain on this guy. So this guy, it was the, the rare monsters were not really a threat early on. What, now, now that we rely on the higher floors, they are a bit, a bit, uh, a bit threatening. They do only auto attacks, and they have a lot of HP. That it means that they're gonna like, since they never stop to cast, they're just gonna attack you non-stop, which can mean you're gonna get hit for a lot of damage overall. Just something to keep in mind. It's not too bad on tank. On DPS, it can get pretty bad, though. They're, they're still good to kill, though. Because they give you... They have a higher chance of, of chests. They have 50% chance to drop a chest. So, if you see one, it's it's in your way. You might as well kill it. Also, their proximity, so... We have a Serenity there. I'm gonna pull these two guys and I'm gonna go back to the key and kill the two monsters I left right there. Yeah, points. Too bad we don't care about points today. I wonder if that's gonna be my longest stream ever. And we're already at 10 30, 10 hours 30 minutes. And we have about three hours we have about three hours 30 minutes left. So this is going to be like 14 hour stream. Might be my longest stream I've done, I think. Okay, we're gonna start heading back towards the key. So since since we ha we have to move, uh, just bring the monster with me and you know spend my range when you want it. What well, if it ever gets in range? There. Still very nice. So going back to what I was talking about earlier, I, I briefly mentioned how you should be playing Warrior. Um, but I'm just gonna say it again. Basically, Berserk on cooldown. Like, don't I, I see a lot of Warriors making a mistake. What's, what happens is their Berserk is up, but they don't have three Felt Leaves uh, in, in bank, right? And so they wait to Berserk. You don't, you don't want to do that. You want to Berserk whenever it's up. And just do like as many felt leaves as we can. So my burst is up right now. I'm gonna use it felt leaf. Then I'm gonna do my two, my two, my, my three. Like that's it. I don't want to wait. If you wait to use your burst, you're losing too much damage. 
Just use it whenever it's up. So by the way, once when you make it to the last three floors, wow, that floor was very high kill. That's nine. It's very high. I would say once you start making it to the last three floors, don't don't look at time as a like a six minute per floor thing anymore. At this point, try to subtract the time that you need for, for the boss and then split the time between the floors, right? So like for example, I'm about to enter 168. I know the boss is probably going to take me uh if I strength plus loss, it's probably going to take me 8 minutes. So let's remove 8 minutes from 21. That means I have 12 minutes to do 2 floors. Uh, which should be enough time. Unless I get bad debuffs. So this means that what we're going to do is we're going to go into the next set with nothing. Wow, this is... Holy shit, this is a 10 kill floor. This is, this, this is nuts. You you never see 10 kills uh, until like the 191 plus usually. Okay, well this floor was a massive waste of time. This is the kind of floors that sometimes th that can happen that really like kill your time. Okay, well, I found a lot of rages. I will permit myself to use a rage there. Like I said, finding two rage on the set is not really uncommon, so I'm, f I'm, I'm fine using that rage there. Okay, so we have uh, 11 or, or so minutes to do two floor. It might be enough, it might not be enough. Depends if we get high kills and if we get uh, debuffs. So the bit, by the way, this Triceratops is a proximity monster. So you kind of always want to kill it before everything else. Now, an issue that I can see creeping up already. If the floor that I'm on right now, it gives me a very high kill key, I will need to fly the last one. So that's something to keep in mind. We, we know from doing all the floors early on that on this set, it takes me around... It takes me around five to six minutes to do a normal floor with a normal kill count. So right now, the time that we have, we would be able to be to do two normal floors with no debuffs. But like, there's no way for us to know if the next floor is gonna give us debuffs or no or not, right? So if if I go to the next floor and I have only six minutes left, then I will fly because then it's I don't want to take the risk of getting bad debuffs or a high kill. So it all depends on like what this floor gives me. If this opens after 5 kills, then we probably don't need to use anything. If this opens after, let's say, 11 kills, then we will need to use some. So I was watching these monsters while I was fighting this guy. They move, now I can go. This is uh, multitasking, uh, which I have a video for, by the way. If you, if you want to learn how to multitask effectively on tank, I got a video on my YouTube that explains uh, how I do it. He's there, so we're gonna fight non-stop.
This guy is a proximity patrol, by the way, so hard to dodge. But I will still fight it. Uh, so right there, we're pretty lucky. So we don't need to use anything. We should be fine on the next floor. If there's bad debuffs, I could have to serenity, but that's it. And we should be fine. Oop. I misclick this. We we'll just fight non-stop. That's very good. We have a strength. Uh, in this case, I don't want to keep it for the boss because I this strength is gonna make sure that if I have like a very high kill key, if I have like 11 kills again or something like that, well, I this strength is gonna help me power through it. So All these monsters in this room are proximity. This is the kind of thing that loses your time a lot. It means that I probably need to kill all of them to get through this. Okay, so we got a mimic there, but that's what I was saying on tank. We can afford this because if we can fight both mimic and monster at the same time, we just gotta make sure we use defensive as well and interrupt this. Now I should have moved in this in this hallway before this guy moves back. Because now there's a chance I'm gonna have to wait after him. Size is very good. There's a landmine there. We can do a very easy one. Stun the monster. Then go on it. Like this. Very easy way to do a one monster landmine.
Another landmine over there. He's open. Oh, and I have a free strength. But with uh, the with the time we had left, we did not even need a strength on us. So. so I'm gonna use this landmine just to kill this uh, Tracer top. There. Ah, come on. Move to the last section. So we're sitting at three lost. Like I said, you, you should just lost every boss. You don't really have a reason to be uh, stingy with your lost. If you were really scared, you can you can not lose this boss. Well, I guess I guess we won't we won't lose this boss to show the good example. Uh, we also will not steal. I recommend you don't lose you don't uh, steal this boss if possible because going to the next set with three steals is, is convenient. Uh, there's really not much danger even if you don't steal. You just need to make sure you drink potions not stuff. But that's so this guy is the same as the one we fought before the, the rotation is slightly different so he's gonna do douse first this when he does douse you want to make sure you're away from him because w when he goes out to hit you he's gonna slow like this now when he does a tank buster Wait one more attack, then pop sprint and run in a straight line, like this. This way you're gonna dodge this electro chain. And then he's gonna do douse again. He does one electro, then douse. And he's gonna repeat this over and over. Uh, the reason you don't keep... Uh, the reason you have to move him out of the douse, because it gives him a lot of buffs. It's also going to make his electro come out almost instantly, and it's gonna hurt a lot. So after the first slow he does on you, the, all the subsequent slows are gonna have diminishing returns on them, so they don't work, they don't matter as much. Uh, then you're gonna get immune to slows, but like it's gonna come back at some point, right? So this is the third one. This one is the third diminishing return. Drain potions non-stop, of course. This Dao, so this is the fourth one, which means that it's not gonna slow me down this time, it's gonna say immune. There, fully resisted. Whenever you're cutting outside the Dows, by the way, I recommend you you run away and you do one range the Tomahawk. Don't try and be too greedy with your uh, uptime there. So the slow is back up again. You build, basically, you build up Diminishing Return, then you get Immune, and then he, uh, he puts it back on after uh, a certain time.
Also, I don't have food running. I should have food. been doing your attempts on Sage, but this guy is making you want to try Warrior. That's great, man. That's exactly the point of this guy. It makes you want to try Warrior. It does look easy, though, right? You know, like, there's really not much that can kill you as Warrior, so it's all about optimizing your time. Yeah, honestly, no inner release, it kind of sucks when you're, like, exploring a lot. But if you're fighting non-stop, you, you do not... If you're fighting non-stop, like, Berserk, it doesn't suck as much as you would think not having a Berserk. Uh, not even inner release, because, like, since you're fighting non-stop anyway, you're, you're building up, like, the, the rage better non-stop, right? Like, every time my Berserk's up, I have two felt thieves, I feel like. It's definitely less good than in the release. It's just I don't think it's that big of a deal uh, for this combo. Picked up a few butchers. That's pretty good. So by the way, if you want to use a tincture on Warrior, just make sure you try to align it with your Berserk. So like, when your Berserk is about to be up, then use a potion. Like right now. By the way, this mo this boss, uh, it can crit the tank buster. Usually bosses cannot crit tank busters, but this one, it, it can crit it. So you gotta be careful. This is especially true on DPS jobs and healers. It's less, it's matter is less on tanks. So like, look, tanks can crit there. And this water thing he does, this, the drench can also crit. So gotta watch out for this. So the slows on me, doing the same thing, we wait for the, the drench tank buster, this, wait one other attack, sprint, move forward, this way you dodge the thing. You you can tank this by the way on, on the warrior, as long as you pop like a defensive or two, it's not gonna hurt too much, but it you don't really have a reason to tank it because you can just move through the the mod the the, uh, the boss and lose no up there. so so you don't really have a reason to tank it but if you fail the sprint if you don't have sprint ready for this and you're about to get hit just don't panic and use defensives in fact i i will sh i will show you what kind of damage it does right you have an idea. 
So like, let's say I don't have my sprint ready and I, I, you know, I just can't get out in time. I just use, let's say, two defensives like this. And that, that it will not even hurt that much, but not even that hurt. Alright. So Pomanders wise we use nothing. We have a perfect Pomanders. If you have to use a flight there or a strength or a steel, you know, with chain for like I it's fine. Even if you have used a serenity, it's perfectly fine. Like it's your your run is not in a bad spot because you have to use something on the last set. Like you're, it's really not like even if I had if uh, I had to use a fly there and I don't know like even if I had to use a, a witch chain, the the run is perfectly fine. Like this is probably more realistic of like what kind of bombs you would expect. And honestly, you would probably be down a strain as well. You know, like this is I would say more of a realistic bomb lineup that you would have going to the night side. So we're gonna, we're gonna go with that. Uh, so this next set, uh, we have to prepare some things before we actually go into it. I'm gonna show you a strat to make the 180 boss less stressful. Uh, and we're gonna be using this bar for this. So first, let me remember what the hell were my... Uh, what, what was my rotation for uh, the 180 boss? Let me just check my VOD real quick. I don't, because it's a very specific order of spells that we want to use to survive the meteors, and I, I just don't remember what they were. So let me check real quick. Yeah, that's the no chest run. It's this. So let me make this visible. Okay, so what I use on the meteors is... Sorry, it will not take long. Give me just like a minute. One eighty is a big point of failure for warriors, so we want to make one eighty as less, have as little stress as possible. So we're gonna make like everything kind of a uh, workout. So we eat the first meteor, of course, and then I remember the second one was like thrill plus something. Yeah, thrill plus run to. Right, okay. So it's like this. Then the second one was on gang. And then the last one is super plus equilibrium. And run tuition if we need it. Something like this. And then I will put this on each row so I can remember to use it. So that's going to be our 180 bar. I, I will explain uh, what's the purpose of this. Don't worry. So. So for. Uh, I, I did mention briefly earlier. On Gang you want to macro this ability. 
you you want to retro it for this i would say for this set is the most important now where the hell is my mac uh somewhere <laughs> sorry so what happens when you don't uh, okay this is the this is the macro you want to use this macro for omni and this but basically what this does is that if you're targeting something if you press this macro it will it will basically like use omni on you which means it has no minimum range if you do this so this is a very useful macro uh and then you really want to use this i'm not even kidding if you don't use this you're probably gonna, what's gonna happen is you're gonna try and use zombie and you're not gonna you're not gonna realize that you're, you're not in range of the monster you're targeting um so the plan for this set we have actually a set plan it's that we're gonna use landmines on the first three to four floors and then after that, we're gonna we're gonna chill a lot, and we're gonna use mostly strength. Um, you have the option of using a rage on this set too, if you wish to. If you really want two tries on the boss, to, to because it makes you feel safer, you can rage once as well. I don't know if I can recommend that. I, it's a good idea if you're really stressed about doing 180, but like. If you use a rage, it's definitely gonna make it less likely that you can clear. You know, so it's a it's a choice you have to make. Personally, I can use a rage on this set, and then I will still be able to clear. But I I don't know if if I don't know if that's the example I want to give. So I'm not sure if I will go that far. But I'm just saying that you can use a rage if it lets you get two tries on the bus, basically. Um. Okay, so that's it. We just we're ready to go. Well, after I show you the monsters, there's a lot of monsters that we need to mention there. So Bender Snatch is just a lot of damage. Watch out! It's a big tank buster. Snow Clops. So these these are different than the ones we fought like a hundred floors ago. These will do a line AOE on telegraph shortly after pulling them. And then after that, they're gonna do some uh, an untelegraph uh, spin on themselves, right? So you have to walk away from them, or you can also stun them. Uh, something to keep in mind is that very rarely they will switch the order. So very rarely they will do the spin first and then the uh, the, tele the line AoE. So just make sure you're paying attention to the name of the cast. The bear does nothing. The Dalmel does basically nothing. He has some kind of like pseudo enrage that he does after uh, 30 seconds. Which doubles its damage, but that's it. But it's like it's it's not really a big deal. Uh, the wolf is a very bad monster to fight because it's like the soul flare from earlier. It, it's gonna heal itself a lot. It will also put a very strong dot on you. So these are you you can fight them if you want, but I would avoid them. Uh, the Wissant is an easy monster on tank, so it's a patrol that has a 30 second enrage, but you can interrupt the enrage. So you know. You just interrupt the enrage, and you can even survive the enrage with uh, defensives. So they're not that bad. Lion is an easy monster on tank. It's, it's it just has a strong tank buster. Monkey are actually an easy monster on tank as well. You just want to make sure you don't pull them when they're doing the, you know, the, the thing that gives you gives them a damage buff. Uh, they're mostly annoying because when you're fighting other things, they they do something that gives you uh, vulnerability stacks when they're in other rooms that's the i would say that's the biggest thing you have to watch out for and zoos are pretty bad uh they're doable without steel and we will be fighting some of them with no palms just to show how you can do them but like they're definitely the last thing you want to pull most of the time because they require like you know good use of your defensives and things to kill them <clears throat> so the deep palace bird the bird of the deep palace i should say very easy uh, you just need to make sure you never get hit by its AoE, or it will uh, CC you to death. So don't get hit. Carol is annoying because he paralyzes you, but other than that, he doesn't do much. He's even nice enough where if if he paralyzes you, he will stop using his crown attack, so he will just auto attack. Uh, Mimics, they start being kind of dangerous on this set. Like You really don't want to be face tanking a Mimic with no palms, no defensives. Make sure you, you use your defensives well. I would say all the monsters from now on that have a tank buster, you, have, you need to make sure you're using defensives. 
you rotate your defensive as well. And uh, yeah, the 180 push, uh, the 180 bus is uh, much more complicated than the other bus. It's the hardest bus we're gonna face. So just uh, keep this in mind. Uh, one second before I start, I just want to check something. All right, I'm good. We are now on floor 171. All right, let's go. Don't forget your food for this set. This, the food is very important on this set. I mean, it's very important uh, straight up, but it's on this set especially. So like I said, we're going to be doing landmines on the first four floors. First three to four floors. Uh, all our sites. So the plan there is we, we use all our sites. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to show as many ways to do landmines as possible. To like just have a good diversity. Uh, also, I, you want to raising this set. From now on, you're raising every set. So when you zone into 171, we simply use a side right away. We try to see if we can find landmines. There's a landmine. So I'm gonna show you what a lazy landmine looks like. You just stand in between a bunch of monsters and you step on a landmine like this. Like this. This is, this is what I like to call a lazy landmine. Because it's like, there's not many monsters and you just pull a few of them, basically. And then you just spam your defensives right after the landmine is over and then you kill them normally, right? So this is a lazy landmine. That you, this is the type of landmine you do when you don't want to be using a witch chain and you don't want to be using your tank involved, right? So this is like a, this is why I call it a lazy landmine. Now the downside of doing a landmine play like that is that now it means that I need more landmines on this floor. If I don't find more landmines, then it means I will need to kill monsters, you know, manually. But I would say, uh, personally from experience, you will almost always find at least two landmines on the first three floors. It's very rare that I don't find at least two. So that's why I don't feel too bad about it. We're gonna pull the bear. There's another landmine there. So we're gonna do another lazy landmine. Gonna wait for this guy to do the crown there. Now we go. Just like that. It looks it looks stressful, it's not stressful. I as soon as you practice this a few times, and like I said, you should you should be practicing landmines on the earlier floors. As soon as you've done it a few times, this is not stressful at all. Trust me. So the cheese is open, but this guy is in the way, we'll have to kill him. Oh yeah, I did not mention it by the way, but I recommend you steal on the first floor as well. I recommend, especially when you're starting out, I recommend you use a steal for whenever you're gonna do the landmine stuff. It's just gonna make your life easier. Uh, you can even strength if you want. If you strength, it's gonna let you kill the monster, the, like the weakened monsters faster. It's not really necessary though, but it's just, uh, you can use it if you want. So we're gonna go, as you can see this this whole thing, like we use no way chains and we always use one side and one steel. It took us three minutes. That's the power of landmines. That's why you want to do landmines. Landmines are necessary on tank. If you cannot do landmines, then you, it, this set is gonna be way harder. So we're gonna side again. Uh, so this is a treasure room. Is there a landmine inside? I don't think there is. Nope. We got a flight, very nice. So I'm gonna show you a witch chain landmine now. So what, all you want to do a witch chain landmine, try to pull all the easy monsters that you see. So this guy would not be an easy monster. Unfortunately, he might see us. Okay, he did not see us. He was nice. So pull as many easy monsters as you can see. And then while you're doing the pull, just try like to to see what 
where the landmines are. So easy monsters, by the way, are like any monster that doesn't do spells. Uh, sorry, any monster that doesn't do a spell, you know, that's, that, that is very annoying. So like, you know, the doll mill, the bender snatch, but basically anything that's not a cyclop, pull it. Now, here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna use all our defensives now, very soon. I'm waiting for the Cyclops to get there. So I'm gonna use my defensives now. I'm gonna run back into the middle of everything. I'm gonna Witch Chain. Okay, now second plan, second part. I wait for my L to be a little low. Pop, run, cushion, heal, step. Like this. So th I know this happened very fast, but basically what happened is that I it snapshot my HP before my heal. Which means that when I step onto the landmine, my, my, um... Oh, oops, sorry, well, we're gonna kill this guy while I'm talking. So it basically, it snapshot my health before my run to Shen Eel. Which means when I step onto the landmine, it, it barely damaged me. Like, it damaged me, but since I was healing at the same time, it, it basically, you know, like, did no damage to me. This is a very safe way to do a landmine. It's much easier to do it when you use a witch chain, so that's why I did a witch chain there. To show it off. So, so lower is the, the line AoE, you don't want to be in front. This is the thing that you don't want to be close. It's a, it's a circle AoE. <clears throat> now, if you were uncomfortable doing a landmine like this, you could have used your invuln, by the way. I, I, I'm, I'm intentionally keeping my invuln, but you could have invuln there. That would, been, that would have been fine. This guy's gonna pull. I'm gonna use this landmine to beat this up. Like this. So another very fast floor. And then, like I said, we want to use three sites. We want, we want to do landmines three times. So we will site this again. This time I will show you. Uh, we have a rage. I, I'm not gonna use the rage just so I can, I can show it better. This time I'm gonna show you the easiest, safest way to do a landmine. So if you're very uncomfortable doing landmines, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do a landmine. So again, I would recommend you just pull easy monsters with you. Nice raising. Also, when you're setting up the landmine, is the perfect time to be checking chests because, like, if you get a mimic, you well, you it's gonna die with the pack of monsters. So we're gonna be pulling the dalmels. Now, there's a, always a risk. There's a very small risk, but it's a risk that while you're setting up the pull, you do not find a landmine. You know, so if I don't find a landmine, now I have all these guys on me, and I have to deal with them. Um, it's not too bad. You, you can probably kill them like one by one if you ration your CDs well. But if it makes you uncomfortable, uh, you you could rage. Like you could just bring all of the monsters on the key, witching the monsters, then rage. But like I said, you very rarely don't find a, a landmine. So there's one there. So I'm gonna show you the safest way to do a landmine. It it is ridiculously safe. So it's why I, I like. I don't even think it's that good. But we're just gonna pull a bunch of easy monsters with us, like this. Now we're gonna do the same thing. Defensives. We're gonna witching. And what we're gonna do before we step, we're gonna use our invuln like this, and then we step on it. If you do it like this, you will not die. Impossible to die. This is the safest way to do a landmine. But it costs you your invul, right? So it's a... Uh... And if if you get comfortable using landmines, you could do this without a witching. I could have done this without a witching. I just wanted to show up the most... Uh, the easiest landmine possible. So these were three ways to do landmines. So now the game plan for the rest of this set is that from from my own experience, once you've used three sites and you've done three landmines, uh, you will have enough time to do everything else using no problems. 
So now we should be good just fighting monsters and using whatever we find in chests. Time should not be an issue. So this guy has an enrage, like I said. About around uh, after around 30 seconds, he's gonna enrage. We can simply interrupt the enrage, so it's not a big deal. This is the enrage, can interrupt it. I would say also this set is when you, you want to start thinking about drinking potions whenever you're fighting something. Especially if you're still not comfortable uh, with the monsters. I'm gonna go there and make sure I don't pull the patrol. So the key is over there, I see it. That means I'm going straight there. So I pulled this guy at 33. A, a good way to try the enrage. Look at the time at the top right when you pull. And then subtract, you know, the enrage timer. So I pulled this guy around 33. It means around around 4903, it's going to do enrage. So it should be doing the enrage about now. And I just interrupt. That's it. I, I cannot. You can also face tank this on warrior. As long as you use defensives, you will survive the enrage with a lot of HP left. But it puts paralyze on you, so it, it kind of sucks. Like you don't really have a reason to, to uh, not interrupt. So, like I said, this set is all about the landmines. You you want to get to a level where you can do the landmines on three floors fairly comfortably. I would say the easiest way to do landmines on three floors is you will invulnerable the first one with Om Gang, uh, and you you will witching. Then for the second one, you will witching and use right Vision with no and uh, Om Gang. And then for the last one, you will on gain again with a witching. That's the easiest way to do the three floors. So I'm gonna fight a wolf just to show you what it does. I, I plan to fight every monster with Alcyl just to show that it can be done. So this guy is just a lot of damage when he puts the dot on you. Make sure you're drinking potions and using defensives. And it should be fine. He's, he will reapply the dot when he's, it's about 3 seconds left or so. There's, a, there's some RNG, but it's usually when there's 3 seconds left. By the way, as a reminder, you can stun every monster. So like a good a good way to stun this guy is when he's about to reapply the dot, you know? Like stun him before, this way he loses some time. I dodged it, time. Nice. And we're up. Perfect. Debuffs are fine. You should expect to get debuffs at some point. So, so even with the gloom, all these monsters are fairly like doable on warrior. I'm gonna pull a monkey to show you. Monkey, you need to rotate your defense as well. So, and you should be drinking potion also, non-stop.
Um, if your landmines went bad and you actually like you know that you did not save as much time as you think you, you would have wanted to, uh, it's perfectly fine for you to use a strain also. It's right now I my time is really good, so I, I don't need to use a strain. But you could totally use a strain there. There would be no issues with that. In fact, I would much rather you use a strength now because you realize time is is might get bad uh, than you having to rage on the last floor because like you you ran out of time and you just did never like uh, took care of the problem. You know. In, in fact, I guess to prove my point, I'll strain there. I, I just want to prove the point that uh, don't don't hesitate to use things early Be, like don't hesitate to use things early because you think would waste them like it's it ultimately like even if i waste this strength right like let's say i use this train and i make it to the boss with enough time which i will it like you can see it like i wasted a strength but like wasting a strength that is is so like insignificant in the grand scheme of things like it's it's not something you should uh, worry about just, just, just see it as an invest. Like, okay, I, I invested a strength into this, and the strength is gonna make it make it less likely that I get screwed over by Orange, right? That's how you, you should see it. Like, I'm telling you, if you try too hard to save your commanders, like, especially if you start noticing your time bleeding and you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to use commanders, I want to keep them for the next set. Uh, every time what's going to happen, without exception, is that you're going to get on the last four, you're going to get on 178, 179, and then you're going to be like, oh man, I can do nothing but rage. Like, rage is my only option. That's, that's what's going to happen every time. And I'm telling you, you, you think this is not what's going to happen, but this is what's going to happen every time. Like I've, I, I've experienced it so much at this point. And like, it's kind of the same for flight. Like flight and strength, they kind of serve the same purpose. Like, they're pawns that you should use when you're sitting at three and time's bad. Like you should just use it. But in the context of warrior, let me specify. So when you feel yourself yourself drifting behind on time, just use a flight or a strength. Very good value to use them. So as you can see, these monkeys are like on a DPS job. These guys usually require steel without loom. Uh, on warrior, we're doing them in loom with no buffs, uh, no like no steel. So. This is this is warrior privilege. Like this is why warrior is really for this specific reason. Because you can do any monster without buffs. Which means I don't need to ration my steals. I don't need to ration my serenities. Which means I will never be in a situation where I'm like where I'm like, I need check chest. I need to check chest. Like I will never need to check chest on warrior. But it, I will almost never need to check chest. So we have a free rage, but we have a no not back. Door. But I, I don't I'm not going to use a rage on this set. I, I want to show you that only landmines is all you need. I will maybe use a rage if I get a free one, just to show you that you can get two tries on the bus with uh, a rage. But that's it. This is 6 kill. Just keep pulling. Don't even explore, just keep pulling. You don't want to pull. You don't, sorry, I don't you want to explore. Exploring is a waste of time on warrior.
And we drop. That's it. Simple like that. So right now we are 10 minutes ahead of time. We, we are 10 minutes ahead, you know. That's a lot of save time. Another gloom, but that's fine. We have time to deal with it. It's no, it's no worry. This is why we use three land, uh, three sites. So I, from doing this set a lot, I I know that if you use two sites to do two land mines, uh, you will have enough time on the boss. But if you use three sites, what we did, then you have like a lot of time, which means you can do a lot of bad floors. So this bird. Uh, he kind of hurts with the tank buster, but mostly when he does this, do not interrupt. Because all he's going to do is he's going to spam revelation. He's going to stop at the attack. Post. Uh, do not stand in the CUE or he will die. I'm going to pull this monkey again. Gotta remember the tank buster like cycle in your head. So like like I said, most monsters that have a tank buster will do the same rotation. You pull them, they will wait around five seconds, then they will do the tank buster. And then after this, they will tank buster every 15 or so seconds. And this is just like they just do this cycle over and over. So it's five, five, fifteen, 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 each other. That's the, the cycle. Something to keep in mind, after you've done the sites and you've probably spent your witch chains using the landmines, you will be zero, uh, zero witch chains for a while. That means you, you can afford less mistakes. Like if you do a mistake and you pull so, some stuff too much or step on alluring, then you have uh, no witch to do. That, that is definitely a downside, but it the, the landmines are too important not to 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 use so that's just a that's just something you have to look so the, the lion does a big aoe but you can stun the lion so just stun it And we're out. Uh, we are out four kills. I, I'm going to say four kills is extremely lucky, though. This is four kills on a non-flighted floor. Very lucky. But to be fair, it was doomed, so. So, Enzu, I can probably do it in Doom. Uh, but I don't really want to try. I, I don't think like, I don't think you should be fighting Enzu in Doom. If you are finding Lenzo in Gloom, then I would recommend you steal. I, I would actually probably recommend you steal the first time you fight an Enzo straight up, because it's uh, it might catch you off guard the first time you fight one. So, very easy floor. This floor is very easy. Like, two monkeys on the key, so we're gonna kill it. Uh, sorry, we're gonna kill the monkeys on the key. Like, first priority. Uh, by the way, I did not mention it, but the, these monkeys are proximity monsters. That's why we tend to have to kill them before everything else. This bird is also proximity.
so if you interrupt this by the way it's it's worse than letting it go because then the the, the bird is gonna keep attacking you and you just it's probably better to let it spam its slight daily thing all right i'm gonna show how to fight an izu now's a good time So what, how you fight an Enzu is you have to rotate your uh, you have to rotate your defensive well, and you're gonna make use of your stun well. So also. So the way the Enzu works, uh, shortly after starting the fight, it will do like a, this kind of dot thing, wind burn, then it's gonna jump on you, and then it will it will do this jump. Like over and over, basically. It, it, that's the reason that the Enzu is really hard to fight. It will do the jump around every 10 seconds. So you want to stun whenever he's about to do it. And you want to make sure you have a defensive up every time he's going to do it also. And as long as you do these things, he's not that bad. Like just make sure you have some kind of defensive. Like, make sure you use a defensive whenever it's about to jump on you. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Though definitely the first few times you fight one, I recommend you maybe use a steel. Just to get used to like its rotation. Once you're used to the rotation, then it's it's fine. Like, you can fight any Enzu without it. You can probably even fight one in gloom, mostly. I think the only debuff where I would avoid the Enzu is a no ability debuff. So like always, you can stun most of the monsters there, so stun is a very powerful defensive. One of your best ones actually. So like this is a, a 5 second stun on 25 second build Definitely don't, you definitely want to use that as much as possible. And the, the best time to stun a monster is almost always right before it will tank buster you. So you remember the cycle of tank busters? It does it about 5 seconds into the fight and then about around every 15 seconds. The best time to stun is before he does the 15 second one. Because this way you delay the pain buster for as long as possible. Like for example, about right now, he was about to do the pain buster and I stunned him there, so it's gonna like it's gonna cost some time. We're gonna check these chests because they're pretty close. Very good, flight. Uh, it's still not open. I know there's a monkey that I left back there. So I will pull the lion over there. If there's a chance that I have to kill the monkey will end the keys open. We'll see. And just stun for a time there. Uh, that's a respawn. That's an annoying respawn as well. So I will actually try not to fight you and fight the monkey instead. There. there.
Uh, so this is seven kills. It's likely to open. Let's open. Let's go. Let's floor flight. I heard debuffs. Uh, that's fine. We have time to deal with that. Though now, though this no ability, uh, this is the worst debuff on uh, on warrior. With with a no ability, now it actually cuts down the the monsters. Like so, I cannot kill kill an enzy with no ability. Maybe if I have steel, but without steel, there's no way. Um, everything else, I should be fine. The monkey is gonna be a little spicy, but that's it. So, uh, when you're gonna use your Serenities, it's definitely going to be... Most of the time, when you use Serenity on Warrior, it's gonna be for a no item. Uh, sorry, a no ability debuff. This is the most uh, dangerous one for, the, for Warrior. I'm gonna pull the monkey. This is going to be an uncomfortable fight. Very uncomfortable. If it gets too spicy, I will steal. I can tell I will need to server potion, definitely. So I'm gonna use it now. And I can tell that this will need steel. So I would say if you're fighting a monkey, no ability, you probably wanna steal. I think without steel, this was gonna be too hard. But that's good to know. I, I, I was not even I, I wasn't even sure myself uh, if I needed steel for it. Now the end zoo, uh, it may be possible with steel, but uh, this one is a big, uh, big question mark. Like I'm. I'm really unsure actually if you would be able to do it uh, in no ability, even with skill. Well, this is the second kill. So we have a free rage there. We don't even we don't even need it, so we're gonna just gonna do it to the next floor. So I'm going to fly. I I, I'm trying to get my palms like more maybe uh you know my, maybe what your kind of palms you would have. I think you, you would have maybe two flies going into the the next set. So we're gonna use a sight uh, sorry a flight there. Uh, it's also gonna show you that I can get two tries on the bus. I will have time to try the bus two times, just in the event that we failed once. It's the the landmines on this set. They save you so much time. It's insane. Like it's it's definitely the most important thing you can do on on tank. You can learn tank because you have to understand that 
by doing the landmines on this set and saving you a lot of time it basically makes the next few sets like much easier because you're gonna have like a lot of resource to deal with them Yeah, it, it makes sense. Like the, I feel like a lot of people they waste time, they waste too much time exploring, and just like I think also trying to dodge monsters too much. You know, on Warriors, since the game plan is really simple, like since we're just like running forward and killing everything, it's like we save a ridiculous amount of time on the floor. Like it's basically just find the key and go. And then get whatever chest is on the way. So I'm gonna find an Enzu with Steel this time, just to show you the difference with Steel. Because you're gonna see with Steel, it's much more easy. But it's the same concept. Like, you just want to make sure you use a, a defensive every time it's about to jump on you. And then you want to try and stun it before it jumps on you also. Now it's about to jump on me, so I will use another defensive there. So we're gonna, the, the one ED that we're gonna do is gonna be, uh, I kinda wanna say almost experimental. I'm gonna try, like since I have times to do two tries anyway, I will try the first one. The, I will do the first attempt in a way that I think works better. Uh, because if I if it doesn't work, then I will uh, have time to do it again. So we have 22 minutes to do the bus, which is plenty of time to do two tries. Personally, I think if you are like very uncomfortable on this boss, do exactly what I did on the on this set, right? Except consider using maybe a rage on the later floors, or maybe using a lot of flights to make sure you can make it there with like 20 minutes. You need you need around 19 minutes for two tries on warrior. Anyway, let's just do it. So this boss is very easy. Uh, well, very easy. It's it's easy until 15%. He, he has a very like straight rotation that he just follows and he, he spams over and over. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Uh, well, once he goes to the other side of the wall, because I was I was distracted by talking. So okay, I'm gonna start a rotation from when he's on this side of the wall. So he does trounce, you just want to be away. Then he's going to do chariot twice, which is the tornado that we saw earlier. Now on melee, you can bait the, the chariots kind of like, oh, I'm doing it right now. You can bait them on one side. Then you simply get close to him. He's going to do a cone next. You run through the cone. This way you don't lose any uptime. Um, then he's going to do another chariot. Can just bait it there again. Then the next thing he's gonna do is he's gonna run up to this wall. So just make sure you're ready to run after him. Make sure you dodge the trounce. Then once he's on this wall, he's gonna do different a little bit. He's gonna do the the cone first, the thunderbolt. So make sure you're you're close. He's gonna do the two cherubs again. You can bait one there, then bait one like a little like the diagonal there. Then get close to him. Around there. 
Wait for the crown. Move like that. This way you don't lose any uptime. Uh, I believe the next thing he does is another cherub. No, never mind. He runs right away. So you just run after him. Now I'm going to show you another way to do this. Where you will lose a little bit of uptime, but it's it's easier. So you just bait one cherub. Move across. You're going to do another cherub. And then just play it safe. Just kite like that. Just, just make sure you keep kiting like a counterclockwise. Uh, well, clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. That also works. This is the less uptime, but easier to do. Uh, wait. Also, when the boss is at 80%, you can strain. I kind of missed that, but when he's at 80%, it's time to strain. Uh, I also recommend you steal for your first time there. I'm not going to do it because I don't need to, but I recommend you steal. Just, just so it makes your life easier. If you steal there, it's going to give you less pressure. Like it's, you're going to worry less about messing up. I'm also going to give you another tip. This one is very specific. If you're, kind of, if you're the kind of person that panics a lot, right? Like you will panic easily. Um, there's something you can do. To make sure you don't mess up. So you see the bar I made at the top right there. This is, this is the order of meteors when we get to the push. Uh, if you're scared that you're gonna misclick these buttons during the fight, you can simply use steel to make sure that you're very tanky, drink your potions non-stop for the entire fight, and then remove these buttons from your bars. Because I, I, this is a mistake that I see people do a lot. They will, they will panic like right before the push, and they will use their cooldowns, like uh, their alien cooldowns. So the way to do this is you simply remove them. from your bars. But then you need to make sure you, you click them when it's time to do the meteors, right? So I, I, I did not really like mention what the hell the burst is about. I maybe should have explained it a little more. But basically when the boss it's 15, when, when the boss goes below 15%, he's gonna start doing like a, a meteor which will fall down every 10 seconds, and that Meteor does 80% of your current health. Uh, sorry, of your max health every time it falls down. So for this push, you need, you will need to burst the boss for this, because it, it will kill you. Like, you need to kill it before it kills you, basically. Uh, and this is like, the, the things I made at the top is basically the order of healing things I will use. So when the first Meteor falls down, I will use nothing because I, I'm still 100% health. And then right before the second Meteor falls down, I will use these two things. Then right before the third Meteor, I will use Omgang. Then right before the fourth Meteor, I will use these three things again, and then it will die. That's the order of things. And DPS-wise, you just want to make sure you have maximum uh, freaking uh, maximum uh, rage, and all your cooldowns ready, and you will burst with it. So like I said, if you're the kind of person that panics and you think you will press your healing cooldowns like by muscle memory before the push, wasting them, remove them from your bar, and then click them for the meteors. Because during the meteor, you don't have to do anything other than stand there and press 1, 2, 3 and tell No, so you're not actually doing much during the meteor. There's plenty of time for you to actually click the buttons. So. Well, maybe that's not really viable if you're on controller, but I thought I was like, maybe a nice way on PC to uh, help reduce the stress. Because this is people die on this boss because of stress, almost always. So once the boss is at 22% or so, I will lust. We will put 5 stacks of lust on it. Uh, and then we're gonna do the push a little different than you might have seen in other videos. The way we're gonna do the push is we're not going to care about the percentage of the HP that much. Once the boss is at 15%, that's it. We're gonna stop. Simple as that. 
Once the boss is at 15, we will stop. We will stop attacking. We will not even run any macros to check the, the percentage. We don't need to do that. And then we're simply gonna wait for the boss to do any cast, anything that is a cast. And as soon as he casts something, we're gonna start the burst. So we're, we're not gonna push at a specific time either. So I, be I believe if we do these two things, this will be significantly less pressure. Um, I used Berserk there. That was a mistake. Now I gotta wait for my Berserk to be up again. No big deal. If you do, if you mess up like that, which uh, what might happen, like you use a, an important cooldown before it's time, just relax. Like just, just stop attacking. Take it slow. Look at your strength to make sure that your strength is not gonna run out. And then just wait for your cooldowns to be up. That's it. So I'm gonna do what I said there. I'm gonna wait for the boss to cast something and my regen potion to be up. So ne next time my regen potion is up and that my and that, and that the boss is casting something, I will lost. I can even use a defensive if I want. I just make sure you don't use a defensive that that heals you because you need them. So I use rampart there. Then we're gonna put five stacks. Don't be greedy on the last, by the way. Just move when you need to. We're gonna put five stacks. Now, what we're gonna do, make sure we spam potion. So all we're gonna do is one, two, and we're gonna get the buff. We're gonna do, we're gonna do the one, two, three that give us the buff. We will do this until he's at 50. Nothing else. So he's at 50 now, we stop. Next time he casts something, we go in. Okay, so we go in now. And we just keep using our potions. So first meteor, Rhine Tuition plus Trill of Battle. And you want to remove the Trill of Battle from your buff. Like that. Second meteor is going to be Home Gang. So we just press it now. Third minion is going to be Equilibrium plus Potion plus Run Tuition. Just to be safe. The Run Tuition is to make it safer. And it should die there. There you go. So in my opinion, this is a much less stressful push. We don't worry about percentage. We don't worry about specific timings to push. We just like, we just do what I did there. Very so very simple to repeat. Um, first, I, I recommend you have still still up so you don't panic. So for the boss, as soon as the boss is at eighty percent, you use a strength. Uh, you do the fight normally. Once the boss is at tw around twenty two percent, you just put five stacks of loss. Uh, as soon as your potion is ready, go in loss. Put five stacks. Go out of the loss. Then what you're gonna do? is you're gonna spam one, two, three, the Storm Eye version. Like you're gonna spam your buff basically, non-stop, until the boss is at 15. Once the boss is at 15, don't do any macro. Like don't do any HP macro, just stop doing everything. And then you just keep keep moving. And the as soon as the boss does any cast, like it, it can be a Chariot, a Trounce or whatever, then you Berserk and you do like all your Felt Leaves and all your Inferiates and then you just start the push normally. And the push is very simple. First Meteor falls down, you do nothing because you, you should be full health because you've been spamming your potions. And then you just... the set Before the second Meteor, you use Raw Intuition, Trill of Battle. Uh, you made sure you you have to remove this, by the way, the Trill of Battle thing, you have to remove it. You should probably use a macro for that. Uh, you should have a macro that makes it so that when you use Trill of Battle, it removes the buff instantly. So anyway, before the second Meteor falls down, you use these two things. You should be full. Before the third Meteor falls down, you use Om Gang. And before the fourth Meteor, you use Equilibrium, Potion, and Run Tuition. And the Run Tuition is more of a safety net. Like, these two things are usually enough to keep you alive. But the Run Tuition makes it safe, so... So okay, that's it. That's all you have to do. 
Uh, you miss my 170 to 180. Any tips for Pomanders? Very easy, Dorito. Uh, you simply use sites on the first three to four floors. You do landmines on all of them. And if you do them correctly, you're going to have no issues on the rest of the set for time. You will have to use no Pomanders. All right, I'm going to go get some water because uh, my throat is starting to be sore. So let me be right back real quick. Oh, yeah, I'm back. So next set... Uh, uh, next set is where all the nasty monsters are. So this is... Uh, there's a lot to talk about for the monsters here. Um, but th this first one is not bad. So the Wamura... Uh, this is a very easy monster. Is only a problem if you do if you accidentally pull this one plus something else. He has a very strong heal that he will use on other monsters. So you you want to be careful about pulling this monster at the same time as other things. Our grenade is very easy. Sprite is very very easy on tank. So this is a tank privilege there because this monster tends to be very annoying on DPS jobs. But on tank, it's free. Uh, Wemu Rakampa is very easy on tank as well. Garm is uh is uh, well is the uh, the Garm I guess it's this is technically an easy monster, but you have to respect its mechanics. It has two like main mechanics. It, it does Ram's voice, which is a untelegraphed uh, point blank AOE, and then it also does Dragon's voice, which is an untelegraphed donut. And if you get hit by either of them, it's probably a one shot. So you have to be very careful with them. Uh, Worm is it sucks. The thing that, that sucks the most about the worm is it's it's it will hit you in other rooms and for quite a lot of damage. Uh, actually, fighting a worm on tank is not that bad compared to other jobs. It's not that bad, but but it's it's still a hard fight. But the the tank as a tank you have a lot of tools to deal with it, so it's not too bad. Crawler is awful. This is the the most the the worst monster you can fight on this set as a tank. You can do it, but it's just not a good fight. Uh, Venter are free. Archerzaurus are they hit hard, but they're not that bad. Uh, the claw is actually not that bad on tank, but it, it it will pull you in every ten seconds or so, which can be annoying. 
but I, like it, its actual damage and stuff is not too bad for tank. Uh, Flood Dragon are doable on tank, but this will need like most of your defensives. They, they, they do a lot of damage, so you gotta watch out. And the rare monster actually kind of kicks ass. So that if you see the, the rare monster, which is the Jodiced jo Ribbonus, she hurts uh, quite a lot. But the, on a tank, it's still like not that bad. Like there, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, I would say the set that we're going to go in now is kind of like the tank privilege set. Like what 180 is like the, the challenge for a tank. The big challenge, I would say. And now... Your, your reward is that you can fight all these monsters that you, on other jobs you would need steel for. You can do them with no steel on the warrior. All right. So let's go. It's not a victory lap exactly, but it's it's not that far. You know, like it's we still gotta play good. It's still hard. Especially if you if you've never been on this set before, I think it's pretty hard on a even on a tank. Well, that's why we're making VOD. So how we push time on this on this set is this is the set where we're gonna have to adjust the most. So we still follow the role of like pull like whatever is in front of you, fight non-stop. Uh but mostly what we're gonna be doing. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, my, my voice is trying to give out. Mostly what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be using whatever we have that is at 3. Uh, even at 2 is fine. So like for example there I'm going to open with a strength. I do need 1 strength for the boss, so I don't want to go like down to 0. But using 1 strength is fine. Gonna speed up this floor. So we are going to be using something on almost every floor basically. If we don't do that, we're gonna run into time issues. And in fact, we're probably gonna run into time issues even if you use something on each floor. So that that is not a set. That that's not really a set where you can rely on on the pace that you're going. Like if, even if you think you're going on a good pace, you need to you keep using stuff. So like I said, what you want to do there is you want to get kind of like get your pomanders down to two as soon as possible. So we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna be using flight alteration, uh, and if we get something like a very bad, you know, like a gloomed floor or something like that, we might raise also. Yep, that was a flight in the first chest that I I. Chose. Hey, welcome back, the the Raban. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been great. It's been great. Somehow I found things to talk about for 14 hours. So, so this one over campfire is is pretty easy. Just just want to make sure you like don't stay at low health because it does have a tank buster. So the Garms, the Garms have more health than the average monster. So they technically they're slower to kill, but I still recommend you kill it before because it's a proximity monster and it's really big. So it is almost certainly going to be in your way at some point. So you might as well get rid of it now. So like very easy mechanics. Dragon's voice is a donut. The in uh, and Dragon's voice also is a very long cast. You can tell it's going to be Dragon's voice because it takes a while to cast. And then Ram's voice is the opposite. Ram's voice is a circle around him. Dragon's voice again. Um, keep in mind, you can interrupt both the Ram's voice and the Dragon's voice. But I don't recommend you do that. I, I, well, I don't recommend you get used to doing that. I recommend you only interrupt if you would be in trouble. But I highly recommend you don't interrupt for uptime because it, what happens if you're gonna if you start interrupting for uptime on the guard, at some point you're gonna try to interrupt and your interrupt is gonna be down and you're gonna die. Like it's it's just what's gonna happen. 
Yes, exactly. You should kill the Garms because you might you might feel like you're saving time by skipping them, but almost nine times out of ten, it's going to waste your time in some other way, and then you're gonna have to kill it after all. Anyways, just get rid of it. And trust me, if you if you use your palms like optimally, like if you use them for a good time games, we we are like we are not gonna run out of fun. Like this is it's just impossible. As long as we use things like smart. So you know, if you take an extra 20 seconds killing a Garm, it's kind of whatever. You'll live. This it's not what's gonna make or break your run. I guess is what I mean. What's gonna make or break your run is when the Garm that you tried really hard not to kill uh, goes like like you 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 lose track of it and then it bumps into you while you're fighting something else and then you die. Thanks for the follow, Yokoi. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So we're still not out. This is the sixth kill. Oh, that's a respawn. So we're gonna be using something on next floor, anything. We're gonna use flight. Simple as that. Just like literally use anything that you have at three that will benefit you in some way on time. Also, when when you have a little bit of a, of buffs left, like le right now I have a little bit of strength left. Usually it's a good idea to strength uh, to use a, a flight if you have like a little bit of something left. The reasoning for this is because if you get bad debuffs. Then you have like a pomander that's gonna help you power through it, and then you're gonna have to spend less time on the floor. So I'm fine checking this when I'm fighting this guy. If this ended up being a mimic, I would have been fine with my defenses. So as you can see, like they hurt. The monsters they hurt. But you you do have to respect the content a little bit there. But as long as you keep your potion rolling and, you know, a defensive active at most times, it's usually not bad. But you really should not die like, you know, like... You should not face a monster and then you're like, wow, I die. Like, it, the monsters should not one-shot you, like, it should not surprise you if you die. If you die, it should be like because you... It was a long, drawn-out fight and you just ran out of HP and you had, like, no witch chains or something. Talking of witch chains, we've been unlucky on the witch chains. We did not find a single one. Well, that's fine. Well, that's a mimic. That is fine. That was a uh, that was an uh, possibility in my head. So I'm just gonna make sure I use defensives until the bomb is dead, and then you know, I kill it. Well, the mimic kind of hurts, by the way. You you need to respect the mimic at this point. It's not that bad, but it's like, it's bad enough where you need to uh, be paying attention. Oh yeah, I might be doing stagger cutting without even realizing it. Yeah, whenever I'm moving, whenever I'm like, you know, moving a lot, it's because I want the monsters to kind of uh, waste time chasing me, which makes them attack less, basically. It's honestly not very required, like it's... If you, you if you just like use defensives like on a you know on a good rotation and you don't really need to do something like that. It's just it lets me eat less potions. So. But yes, like whenever I'm running away, it's because I I'm wasting the monster's time. So it attacks me less. Nice, another mimic. Something you can do by the way, if you have Om Gang. You can use Om Gang. Open the silver. And then if the silver blows up, 
while you, you don't die and the monster will be very low. So. It's, it's just a nice way to use your own game because otherwise you're not going to be using own game much. It's funny that you mentioned the fact that I'm kiting the monster because I was... It, I'm, it's honestly such muscle memory at this point, I did not even realize I was doing it. But yeah, you're right. I, I'm uh, intentionally moving away from the monsters to try and like re reduce the amount of little attacks coming out from them. So we're out. She's there. Uh, that reminds me, let me hide this again there. We don't need this anymore. Okay, we're gonna use something again. We're gonna use alteration this time. Get it down to, to two. The reason we're getting the pumps down to two, by the way, is because we want to be able to pick up things from chest and not have to use them right away. Like we want to, we want to be able to decide when we when we use things. So it's better if we keep them at two now. Because anyway, we're going to need to use things for time, you know? So it's just the best time to do it is now. So time is actually pretty good right now. But like I said, you should not rely on... on uh, you should not really rely on if time is good or not on this set. You should be using things non-stop. We're gonna pull this arm. Prime's voice, get out. We could interrupt for uptime, but like I said, I don't recommend you do that. I recommend you only interrupt if you're going to die, you know? If it's your last resort. Do I see another Garm back there? It's probably gonna be one of the next things I fight. So this is Altery, which means I have a room that is full of Mimics or Corrigans. So I, I need to check this out also. Uh, you can walk past these guys, they are sound. You can also walk past the Worm, he is also sound. So I don't actually know what I got. I'm gonna kill this guy while I'm still kind of moving around. I believe there's a Garm somewhere there. Yeah, right. Okay, so we got Mimics. Uh, it'd be kind of nice. Oh, we have to fight him. The key's there. Okay, so we're fighting there. Doesn't matter what we do. It's 
perfectly fine, by the way, to uh, steal for comfort. If you're sitting at three steals, feel free to steal at any point on this set. Personally, I don't need it too much, but if you're finding something that's like really uncomfortable, just just steal. There I did a mistake. That's a good time to steal. So as I as I said earlier, when you're fighting two monsters, one of one and one of them is like significantly more dangerous, just keep this one targeted. Like focus down this one and honestly just kind of ignore the other one. Well, ignore it for uh, as much as possible. That's the tank religion yet. I know this bomb is gonna be casting a Niwi at some point, like this. So just keep your eyes for this, but otherwise just fight the Garm. Like, barely acknowledge that the other one exists, uh, is what I mean. And just rotate your defensives, you know. That guy's a respawn. I would say, so you never saw me hit a trap on start, since we went on the 150 plus stuff. It's um, it's it, it's because if you hit, if you start like randomly stepping on trap this high up, it's there's not much you can do. Like if I step on the trap on this floor, my only option is probably to to kill myself with the raising, like to to die and let them kill me with the raising. That's like the only viable of that. The only, the only other thing I could do is rage. So, like you, you really don't want to step on traps once you start doing 150 plus. So you, you make sure you are the walls very tight at all times, and then you make sure you know the wall traps uh, exactly. Like the three I showed you, you need, you need to know them. As long as you know the wall trap by heart and hurt the walls very tight all other times, you will, you should never hit a trap. But like I very rarely. You should only hit a trap if you're going for like a chest in the middle of the room or something like that. So you can see we're bleeding time on this floor. This is damage down, we have no strength, and the alter give us mimic, so of course we're bleeding time. This is why I said you want to be using most of your commanders. I'm not even kidding. It's perfectly fine if you use every single thing you have except like resolutions. Because next set, you don't actually need that much to clear it. It's the the, the, the really rough one is this one. So it's like, don't feel shy to like empty out your flights, empty out your alterations and all that. It's perfectly fine.
So we're getting unlucky there. We're getting a high kill key. I'm gonna fight a Trotter just to show you what it's like. It's This is not a good fight though. Not a very uncomfortable fight because it puts a poison on you. But this slow also. This slow is very bad. It can be done though. Just make sure you rotate your defensive as well. You probably don't even need steel for it. I, I do have a steel, but without a steel, you're probably fine. Like I said, don't look. The, the, re, you really don't want to be looking at the face of this set too much because you're gonna you're gonna go into a depression if you do. Like it's as soon as you get any floor that you fight normally with no strain, it, you're gonna bleed time like crazy, and you just can't do much about it. So next floor, I'm actually doing affluence plus fight. Affluence because now I've gotten a few of my commanders down to two. Flight because I we need to gain time. And flight plus affluence is a good combo to use. Uh, so, so this is gloom. We flighted this, which means we don't really want to rage. If this was not flighted, I would probably rage this. Yeah, I've become, I've become Bunny for a short period of time. Or a long period of time, I don't know. Depends how much I like her. She's pretty cute. So this is a good safety floor because there's this chest right there uh, that is kind of risky. So if I can, if I'm able to check this chest with the safety, it's gonna make things uh, simpler. But we found a flight again. Now. So I'm gonna check this while I'm fighting. Good, very good. This is very good. Strength is uh, is very good. We're probably gonna be using this uh, now or the next set. Like I said, we don't need two strength for the boss, so like I'm perfectly fine going down to two, uh, to one. Okay, I'm gonna kill the Garm. I feel like he's gonna be in my way at some point. Just better get rid of the patrols, as always. It's very hard to give advice, like, 
it's hard to give specific advice on this set because this set is is much like it's a very reactive set where you kind of react to what you get so like sometimes you rage like really fast because you just get bad buffs sometimes you rage really late sometimes you like keep finding flights and then you know like which is gonna force your serenities a lot and you know it's really like it's up the game but like my main advice for this set is fight non-stop as always but like play play as if this was your last set like use everything that you need to use and don't don't even worry about what you're gonna carry into the last set because no matter what happens you're gonna be carrying three resolves to the last set like these these three resolves you will you're not gonna use them there like even if you use everything uh, so that's an unlucky maybe because now I'm gonna waste an entire minute killing this guy but that that's just risk from checking chest Do I have to respect its damage, though? So we're gonna using uh, we're gonna be using flight again. And we're probably gonna couple it with a strike also. Since I'm wasting my time fighting the Mimic, I might as well check this chest. Since it's right there. Intuition. Oh, yeah. We're gonna fly it again. We're gonna couple it with an F once again. No knockback. We've got another mimic. This this mimic I'm not actually mad about. This is not this is not a bad mimic at all because like the fight the uh, the forge was started anyway. And this guy has a higher drop rate of chess. So, you know, it's kind of like, kind of see it like a, a free kill. Well, it's not free, but let's see it like an easy kill. Because honestly, the Mimic is way less bad than a lot of monsters down there. So by the way, on this boss, on the Warrior, uh, we will need about, if I remember right, it's... It's something like... Uh, let me remember. It's I think it's something like 10 minutes with 1 lust, 9 minutes with 2 lust, and 8 minutes with 3 lust. Something like that. Also, uh, the, the next boss is pretty... Uh, tanks have it pretty easy compared to other jobs. Which is very nice. But there's... Um, it's not well explained how you're supposed to lost on a tank job on the boss. So I'm gonna make sure I spend time explaining that. I'm gonna pull the patrol so it's not in my way. Then we're gonna fight the worm and the claw so I can show off both of them. Uh, I did say I will strength. I think I'm gonna do it. I kind of forgot to, but I will strength this. Okay, so the worm is a very interesting monster on tank. This guy hurts a lot. He's, he's though he hurts, but you, you can do him easily with uh, just defensives. 
he has a 30 second enrage. So we, I pulled him at, at 10, so it's gonna enrage around 40. Uh, but the thing with the enrage on tank is that it's very easy to deal with the enrage because you can stun the worm. And the enrage is like a two part enrage. He's gonna first suck you in, then he's gonna do the enrage. So we, what we do is very simple. We wait, we, we just wait until we see the, the, the suck in tank. He's gonna do it soon. As soon as we see it, we stun and we run away. And when we do that, he's gonna do like the, he's gonna, he's gonna waste the enrage like that. Very simple way to do this monster on tank. So you wait until you see the telegraph, stun, run away. You're gonna waste, you're gonna lose like, I don't know, like three GCDs maybe. And then you wait until he does the enrage and then you go back. That's it. Very simple. We're getting pretty unlucky on Nimix then. That's fine. Okay, so this, this scorpion just moved. Uh, while I was looking at him while I was fighting Nimix, so now we can actually squeeze past. We're just gonna keep using the, the flight. We're gonna use the flight again. It's it's really not a bad idea to like just get your flights down to zero on this. So highly recommend you do that. Like actually just keep using your flights until you, you run out of them. Okay, this is a good floor. Should not be hard to fight this. Kill the patrol first because it will be the most annoying. Hey, we finally found the witching back. Nice. Uh, I would recommend from this point on. Do not use your weight chains for anything other than just saving your ass, like from a mistake. Which is why it's very important that you, you, you get good at doing landmines. Because if you get good at doing landmines, you're gonna be able to do them without weight chains. Which means you're gonna have a lot of weight chains left when you finish the last, the, the 171 to 180, which, and weight chains are like just the best way to save your ass whenever you do something stupid. Or like whenever you step on a trap. So I see that, I see that the key's not there. So let's go back. Okay, I'm fighting, I'm gonna fight the cloud to show you what it's like. It's not too bad, honestly. Okay, the key's back there. So the claw, he's gonna suck you in every 10 seconds or so and do a tank buster. Just make sure you have defensives up. The thing that's important is you have to keep your stun. He's gonna do something called tail screw very soon. Stun this. If you don't stun this, you're gonna get, I think, 20 seconds of, of GCD slow debuff, which just sucks. And uh, your stun should be up every time he's about to do tail screw. So you, sh you should not like have to deal with it really. I'm gonna check this real quick. Okay, I'm gonna fight the claw over there. And then I'm gonna fight the flood dragon to show you what it's like fighting a flood dragon. Flood dragon is doable with no buffs. I, again, I do have a strength, but it, it would be doable without the strength.
I do recommend if you're if you have to fight the flood dragon, I recommend you keep all your cooldowns ready for it. It, it hurts, and the way you do the flood dragon is very uh, interesting actually. Uh, so wh when when a monster puts a dot on you, the dot snapshots with like the damage. It's no, fuck, I got the slow. Well, I'm gonna wait the slow. So when, when when the monster puts a dot on you, let's say the dot does 100 damage base. If you use a defensive, it will snapshot. So let's say I use Rampart. Now the dot does 80 damage base. So if my Rampart is up when he puts the dot, it's now an 80 damage dot. The way dots work, if if he tries to put the same dot on you, but the, the, the new dot would do less damage than the dot already on you, it will not put the dot. It means you can kind of cheat. Let's say I rampart the first dot, it will be an 80, 80 dot. And then when he's about to put the dot again, I will use a stronger defensive. And that will make his next dot weaker than the, the dot on me right now. And it, it make it so he doesn't put the dot on me. I'll try to show you there. So I use rampart right away. He's gonna open with a dot. Very powerful dot. This. So this is the, the reason this guy is really hard is this dot. Now I'm going to use my vengeance. When he's about to do it again. When it's about 10. Right there. So you're gonna see what happened. He's gonna put the dot on me again. It will not apply it. It does not refresh it. Because it, it's a weaker dot. Because of the snapshot. And the game is like... The, the game is trying to help out the dragon basically. By making sure he doesn't apply a weak dot over a strong dot. That's why it's doing it this way. I don't know if that made sense. But basically when you're fighting the flood. Make sure that the second dot he puts, you have a strong defensive against it. Also, the dot, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention it. The dot is very strong. Uh, like, even after the, the guy's dead, like, the dot is, is very strong. You, you need to make sure you're full health. Like, it, the dot does more damage than your regen potion out of combat. So, you gotta be careful. Uh, yes, correct. This will also work with Tactician. Anything that removes, that makes it hurt less, will work. Oh, I stunned too fast there, so I'm gonna get Tail Screw. Nah. So on Machinist, you can do the same job, uh, the same thing. On the first dot application, you use nothing. With It does, like, let's say 100 base damage. And then on the second application, just make sure your tactician is up. And then it, may, it means the second application, it will be 90 base damage. Which means it will not override the whole dot. Which means it does not like... Uh, uh, of course, the, the upside of doing that, it means it doesn't refresh the dot. So I use the flight again there. This would not be a bad serenity. Okay, this is... I'm gonna side this to see what's up. This is a weird floor. That I might do weird things on. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna interrupt this because I don't want to pull the other garms. Okay, I do see this landmine, and I could use it. I, I just don't think it's a very realistic thing to do, uh, to use the landmine. I, I don't think you would use that landmine if you were trying to care for the first time, so I'm not gonna use it. It's The, the landmines are this high up are like kind of reasonable. So 
I'm keeping my uh, I have my witch chain in mind. I'm keeping my my tap open because I know that if I pull two two arms by mistake, I need to witch chain. The only reason I took this kind of risk there, where I, like you know I kind of like went past the other arms, is because I knew I had a witch chain if I accidentally pulled them. So. So the, this this set is weird. Like, basically, you as soon as you start this set, just offload all your flights, some of your altars. Uh, I would say offload most of your strength except keep one, and then at the end check what kind of time you have left, and then rage the rest. Basically, that's that's how I like to do this set personally. Also, we can do something called a double dip rage. I'm considering doing it. Double dip rage is when you make sure that you use the rage on the key to get out faster. And then you use the rage on the next floor to kill monsters. I'm actually going to do this. So I will rage this. As soon as the key is open, I will go into the next floor. Like that. This means I have I'm gonna have around 40 seconds of rage to do to kill the monsters on the next floor. But there's a small risk that I'm going to have no not back uh, debuff. So that's something to keep in mind. We did not get it there. And then I just try to kill as many things as I can within that rage. This is what you call a double dip rage. This is the most efficient way to use a rage for time. Like if you only care about time, this is the most efficient rage you can do. And it is very strong on tank. Doing a rage like that is very strong on tank because since you're so tanky on tank, like you're probably not going to die like you know like trying to do the monsters. So it worked out really well there. So we, that floor was basically free. Like we we did two floors with one rage. That's the power of double the rage. And now next floor we can take a small gamble. We're gonna alteration. If the alteration is nice to us and gives us courage again, we can probably do this floor with nothing. Uh, if we get mimics, we're probably going to have to rage. I will use it still. I'm gonna use a safety so I can get uh, this chest easily. He's gonna turn around. He's gonna turn around. This train is very nice. I just want to see five Corrigans. I have Mimics. Okay, so we're gonna rage this. You, you might find it weird that I'm gonna rage this, even though I have like this much time left. But I'm gonna tell you why I rage this. It's because it is actually impossible that I get out of this for in time with mimics. Impossible. So when what you do when you have a lot of time, but you still need to rage, is you're gonna do like what I like to call uh I don't know, like it's like um you, you're gonna do basically a, a rage for chest. So you're gonna kill as many things as possible with your rage, basically. Dude, there are so many patrols. What? Well, this so the, the time that we have is basically gonna let us check more chests. That's the advantage. So we, we, we can afford to check more chests and get like more mimics out of the way. So I'm gonna do the rage this way. Let me pull this guy. Dragon's voice. Let's go. Uh, triple dip, like technically, is possible, but it's I've never seen it like actually happen. We would require a lot of luck. So, in my opinion, going into the next set with one rage three rezos is 
almost a guaranteed clear on Warrior. And like I said, we have time to check chest uh, with this raid, so we're gonna do that. So it's like basically you have two choices when you rage. You do a double dip rage, which is good for time, bad for chest, or you do a, a full floor rage, which is good for chests, but not the best for time, right? So I'm just gonna check this chest, then we're good to go. So I got a mimic there, but it's fine. I have time to kill it, so. So this next boss is actually pretty easy on tank compared to DPS jobs. Like if you, if you compare Warrior to Machinist, the other king, it's it's significantly easier on the Warrior than it is on Machinist. So that, that's the upside of tank there. Oh, Fantasias were on sale. Oh, fa since Fantasias were on sale, I bought the, I bought a few of them. And I decided I wanted to go Viera for a little bit because I've never been a Viera. So I want to try it out. Okay, this was a steal. We're gonna we're gonna use a steal. So I I have a strategy for this boss that is kind of simple. I will explain it. If you don't know, this boss is exactly like the 90 boss, except it, the, its rotation is like a little different, but it's mostly the same concept. You want to push. You want to push basically the red bombs into it when they spawn, and then for the blue bombs, you want to burst them down. Uh, and but there's something you can do to cheat. You can actually place the boss on top of where the bomb is gonna spawn before it does. And there's a very easy way to do that. One. Uh, is that right? Yeah, that's about right. Maybe more like that. I've never put markers for this, but I might as well show it off with markers. So, very easy way to remember where the bomb spawn. Uh, you're gonna go right three times, then you go left once, and then you go middle once. Well, uh, technically you go middle twice, but like it's just like right, 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 left, middle, and that's the way I remember it. So let's try. This boss is very easy on tank if you use a steel. So I highly recommend you use a steel on this. It's gonna make your life so much easier. So you want to kill the blue bomb? You want to lust uh, whenever you kill the blue bomb. There, there's a strat where you like use the lust to kill both the bomb and the boss, but it's it's kind of unsafe. I prefer to use this personally. So. For tank, the way you want to do lost is you don't want to leave the lost when the, the when you're done playing stacks. Stay in the lost as long as possible. You can do one more there easily. There. So we're gonna park the boss on top of one. And there's the first bomb.
So yeah, the rotation of this bus is also it's important to know like exactly what things it does in what order. So I'm gonna start with the blue bomb. So the blue bomb spawns, you kill the blue bomb obviously. Make sure you don't like make sure you're not greedy with this blue bomb. Like kill it as soon as you can. Then when the blue bomb's dead, the boss is basically going to do three saps. You already did one. That's the second one. He's gonna do a third one. After this third sap, he's gonna do a tank buster on you. You want defensives for this. Especially if you don't have a still up. He's gonna do a tank buster there. After this, he's gonna do a sap after a few attacks. And then right after this sap is when the red bomb is gonna spawn. You wanna position the boss where it will spawn. In our case, it's somewhere like that. The, and the bombs, they have a large EOE, so like as soon as long as it touches a little bit, it will work. After that, he, he's gonna do a tank buster again. And then it's back to the blue bomb. Is it, it, then it restarts the cycle with the blue bomb. And he just does that over and over again. That's the second sap, by the way. That is the third sap. So now he's gonna do a tank buster on me after a few attacks. We'll just park the bus on top of uh, this. The third bomb is right. So the order of bombs that spawn is right, 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 left, right. Uh, sorry, right, 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 left, middle. So that is the third one. Third one is right. Now I'm going to do Tank Buster again. Blue Mom next. So let's do the loss now. You want you want to be spending all your loss on this boss, by the way. So, so the more loss you have going into this fight, the better. So again, stay inside of the loss for as long as possible. The next bomb is going to be there, to the left. I'm going to pretend if you mess this up and you don't actually position the boss in the correct spot, like this, simply go behind the bomb, right click. Push it once, and then you do it. That's it. That's all you have to do. Don't, don't panic. Hey, thanks, Krupo. Yep, last bit should be pretty comfy. I don't, I don't expect much issues. We have pretty good farms going into it, so...
So then the fifth one is this. Uh, no, sorry, it's middle. Yeah. <laughs> I got I, I got so distracted by why, when I showed up, like what happens when you miss it, that I I forgot the order of bombs. But yeah, the fifth one is in the middle. My bad there. So my steel is gonna run out soon. I, I guess you get to see a little bit of the fight without steel. It's not that bad, but you do have to use defenses more. Uh, the sixth bomb I know is in the middle, so... By the way, if you mess up the bomb that uh, you're supposed to push into him and it actually like he actually does the, the move, don't panic, you can recover. Just make sure you're at full health. As long as you're at full health when he does the massive burst, it will do 99% of your health. And just make sure you're far from the boss and then do everything you have that heals you before he reaches you and then you'll be fine. No, I would probably show it up if I still had my steel on, but my steel dropped off, so... Alright. Well, this boss, as I said, is really not that bad on tank. It's it's much easier than Machinist. Definitely tank privilege there. So we have pretty good bombs going to the next set. I would say you... I would say we have pretty close to what you should have. Uh, assuming nothing goes really bad. Maybe you would have one less rage. But even if you had one less rage, I wouldn't. I would not be too worried about like this set of bombs. Last set is like it's almost a victory stretch. Like we, you need really bad luck to stop you there. Uh, okay, so let's review the monsters on the last set. Uh, there's a lot of uh, I, I would say like the monsters are pretty much pretty much all nasty in, in some way So first the iron course is uh, is the patrol that jumps on you though It's it says before except now it does like a, a lot more damage Mummy is as before just don't be inside uh, in front of it when it does the crown don't get stunned uh, The trap is actually not a problem at all. It, it kind of hurts when you're close, but on tank It's not that big of a deal uh, Ippo is just, a, he just has a tank buster. Uh, the raid is as before, though now it's it's significantly more tanky, so you're gonna, you're gonna see the screen probably multiple times. And also when, uh, it's different because it will shoot big AOEs in adjacent rooms now. So if you're like close to raids, it's not a good idea to be fighting too much in a, like a, a tight spot because you're gonna get sandwiched. And I think their AOE is a one shot, so you really don't want to get hit by it. Onyx Jackson is, is fairly easy. You just need to make sure you don't look at it when he does the gaze. Uh, Fashan is very easy on tank. It's it's exactly like the Iron Man that would petrify you. It's that, except this time, the, the cone is a one-shot. It doesn't petrify, it just one-shot. Straight up. Um, the bicep, the non-patrol Bicep is just a bait guy that does a bait tank buster. Hurts a lot. Uh, the Knight as a tank buster. It hurts a lot. He also does a donut uh, AoE that you have to make sure you're close to him for. But you should be close to him since you're a tank. Uh, he has an enrage that he does after the second time he does a donut. After around 45 seconds or so. Uh, you need to make sure that when he does this, you chide him away a little bit. I I'll show you how it's done. It's really not that hard. Uh, the doorman just hurts. Keeper hurts a lot. And mimics are actually probably less bad than everything else on this set. So... You should almost be happy if you see a mimic. Damage wise at least. Uh alright. Oh thanks for the follow Groof. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So we're just gonna jump into it. Last set. 
The, the strategy for the last set, honestly... Oh, thanks for the follow, Vampire Gwen. Thank you very much. Um, what was I saying? Sorry. The, the, yeah, the strategy for the last set is, is like almost the same as the set we just did. We just use everything we have, but we, we try to make sure we use the stuff that we have in ways to save time as much as possible. So we're actually going to be doing something on the first floor. Uh, personally, I'm a big fan of using Rezo on the very first floor because I feel like it, it puts your resolutions down to two. Which means if you find any more resolution on the set, it's like uh, you don't need to use it right away. Uh, so yeah, usually I will resolution the first floor. We'll see if I do it this time, but I tend to. And I'm going to show you an easy way to use the resolution on the first floor if I do uh, use it. Anyway, let's jump into it. Last set. First raising, of course. So I'm going to very briefly scout around. If I see a lot of patrols, we will uh, resolution. I already see two. I see one mummy. Okay, so we're going to do a resolution I think, there. So here's how you want to do a resolution on this first floor, in my opinion. You want a safety. To make sure you have room to kite. And then we're just going to make sure we pull mummies. Like, we want to pull mummies as much as possible. We don't want to pull traps, though. Traps, you can walk past them. Make sure you use that. We're gonna steal. Make sure that we're sturdy. So just make sure you have defensives up. Pull a mummy. Pull a, pull a couple mummy, basically. Make sure you keep your elf up. Okay, now before you go into your rezo, use every defensive you have plus home gang. Go into rezo. Do three blasts. Like this. This is a very easy way. Well, maybe it's not that easy, but it's it's a good way to make a good use of your resolution on the first floor. Pull as many monsters as you can. I would say five, then just rezo. And then with the leftover rezo you have, kill kill monsters. The monsters take three hits. And if you do it on the these jumping guys, they will basically get off the jump, but they won't get off anymore. So. Like that and that's it uh, that's the only that's the last undead monster they were there was on this floor. so very good way to make use of your res on the first floor pop steel single pull all the mummies you see make sure you don't pull like something like a trap and then once you have around like five to six monsters on you you just you go into rezo with all your defensive plus arm gang in case you you they get you really low then you go wild, right? If you add, if you have three witch chains, and you're comfortable using your witch chain, you can do exactly what I did there, except you witching the monsters before the rezo, and it's gonna make make it very safe. I just wanted to show off the no witching way of doing this. Like basically, every time I, every time you do something that involves like a bunch of monsters, it you can probably do it with witching to be safe. It's up to you. I'm gonna check this chest before I go in case it opens. It's open. Well, I'm just gonna pray it's not a mimic. Intuition. I, I might have already checked this already. I don't remember. Eternity. Very nice. So I'm gonna have once. Make sure you use all your half points right away. 
I would say also make sure you use all your alterations right away. So this is this floor is either a rage or a serenity or a resolution. We have choice. Um, there's a treasure room on the key though. So we cannot rage, by the way, because of not bad immunity. Penalty, I mean. But we have a free serenity in the chest, so who cares? But I would I was probably going to serenity this. Uh no matter what. So, I accidentally pulled two monsters, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, we had another Serenity there as well. So I'm gonna strength, I'm gonna kill, I, I'm just gonna fight this for normal, basically. I feel like we never got Corrigans. I feel like since since the 170 7 we never got Corrigans. Maybe we did, but I just don't remember seeing them. Well, that's fine. That's fine, that's a risk I was thinking. I knew there was a risk that this would be an image when I opened the chest. But I, I, I can handle two monsters with steel, so... This is the room with the wall trap, by the way. The danger room I talked about. I can tell because there's rocks about to fall from the sky. So by the way, we're gonna be fighting the mimics because they, since they have a higher drop rate of chests, just a good, a good reason to fight them. And starting from this set, the Mimics actually, they, they start having similar HP to the monsters, so like they're not even that bad to kill, straight up. And now though, before we kill the Mimics, we're gonna kill the Patrol, because this guy, if, if I do die, it would be because this guy like ganks me, so. Let's make sure he doesn't get to do that. This set is much more chill than the last one, like... Because there's no pressure to keep your commanders there. I, I did say that last set you should play it as if you were meant to keep no commanders, but like there it's actually like the truth, like... Like you have no reason to keep any commanders now. So you just, you just use everything that you have at the, at the best time you think. Uh, at, the, at the time that you think is the, is the best for your time. Like, for example, right there, so this floor, I know I'm fighting this floor full. I know there's Mimics, I know this floor is going to take a long time, so I use a Strength there. Because I know this Strength is going to be used, like, I know that the full duration of this Strength is going to be used, so... There'll be no waste. Sorry, was updating the stream title. Get 
I still ran out? Holy shit, that opened fast. Okay. Well, I guess we're out. Five kills. Five kills is very lucky uh, on these this high up floors. It, it opens so fast that I'm not even sure if I'll be able to... I guess so. Four and a half once again. Wow, five kills is insane. Like, like, I'm not even kidding. This is really very rare on this higher force. So we have three fortunes. We might as well use one. Let's pull something. Oh, we just keep finding the F ones. I mean, that's good, right? That's more chest. Okay, we're gonna pull something. I'm gonna check this. Uh, no, I'm gonna pull this one. Never mind. By the way, the, the Ippo is a very weird... It's a tank buster monster, but he is actually different than the other ones. Because when you pull it, he does not open with the, the tank buster. He opens with some weird, like, telegraph. You will think about her after. Okay, I'm gonna check this chest be because the guy moved, so I know it's fine still. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, if you're sitting at three steals, it's perfectly fine to use a steal just so you feel safer. Uh, the other thing you can do if you have a lot of steals on tank, I'm gonna show you at, at the end of this floor, but there's a, actually something pretty optimal you can do with steals. But I would only do it if you have a lot of steals. By the way, you can't stun this guy, so, you know. I want to avoid damage for a little bit. I just stun. I'm gonna go around so I don't have to deal with these two guys. He's there. Okay, so we just pull things now. I'm gonna pull the Ippo, but I'm probably gonna have to kill this patrol after. Or he'll be in my way. This patrol, by the way, I did not mention, but it is proximity. So this is like a very... This is a, not really a patrol you want to try to avoid. Uh, on DPS, it's different because this guy... If you're playing DPS, you might need steel for the iron force. On tank, we don't have this issue. On tank, we can we can kill them like straight up. So they, like there's very little reason to avoid them. You just kind of want to kill them as they, as they are near you. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna keep killing monsters in this room until it opens. I I will pri pri prioritize, yeah, prioritize monsters that are near chests. So this way, like maybe I'm able to check the chest if I uh, if it's not open by the time that I need to go. You know? Though in this case they move, so I can actually just check it for free. 
air. Uh, this dragon is proximity. He's an easy monster, but he's proximity, so we'll get a picture of it. So this is just a gaze mechanic. You want to ensure you don't stare. If you stare, it will CC you. And you, you would probably survive on tank, but like just don't get CC'd. Also, this is a gate. This is a cone gaze, so you can actually stand behind it and look at it behind. So this is six kills, unlikely to open. So I'm gonna kill monsters in this room because this room has a chest inside of it. Nice. So what we're gonna do for the next floor is very simple. Since we have three steals, so we can afford to use them for comfort. I'm gonna use a steal before we go to the next floor, like right before. This way, if we get something like a no item debuff, it's gonna be much easier to do it uh, with the steal active. Oh, we got a flight, nice. I'm gonna use this right away, actually. So we're gonna steal before, and we're gonna strength before as well. Just we're just gonna go into this with the uh, full buffs. That means that we should be able to do the debuffs unless they're like very bad. But it, it, in this case, it doesn't matter. But it's not like we're wasting the strength and steal, right? Because we're gonna be fighting anyways. So Fushan is very easy on tank. Just make sure that when he does the crown, you uh, get behind it, or it will kill you in one shot. This thing, level 5 death, go behind it. Uh, honestly, all these monsters are kind of easy on tank. Assuming you have like... You know, like no like very bad debuffs running. If you have a steal, they're like very bad. By the way, for this guy, don't like stop paying attention. He actually he does the cone like really fast every time. So I hey, welcome back one. Yeah, still growing. A little 14 hour stream, you know. I can't believe I'm still talking. <laughs> After all this time. Oh well. It was a it was a damn good stream though. I think I think I I think I did my best, like give, trying to give out like a good information, and trying trying to show off. Um, my my voice is starting to die a little bit. Sorry, trying to show off like the power of war without being too lucky. There's there's a few rage that we found that it, I decided not to use because I didn't want this to be like a rage fest. Yeah, machinist is a different like is a different thing altogether. But I don't really want to do a machinist tutorial, you know, you know why? It's because there's already like so many machinist tutorials, I feel like I, feel like I don't need to do it. There's just too many already. So this treasure room, we, we, are, we have been kind of lucky for in one thing though. We have never had to deal with like a bad treasure room in the way. Well, we, we've had to a few times, but each time we found it fast, so, so fast. That we could just kill the monsters like one deal, one by one. So this AoE is from a ghost. Make sure you're out of that. That will one shot. They, they shoot in other rooms, maybe. But yeah, we got lucky that we never had to deal with a battery room yet. You know, like a treasure room that's in the way full of proximity monsters. We never, we've never had that yet. 
if you get something like a bad treasure room, best way to deal with it is you don't deal with it. You just use a raising and you sacrifice. Like you just kill yourself at the end of it to get through, through the cross. Unfortunately, that doesn't work if the key is inside the treasure room, right? So. Well, uh, uh, BSO, the, um, the strategy for Machinist didn't really change with Endwalker. It, it's, it's just gotten easier. But there's one thing I would like to see someone do a guide for. I would like someone to do a, an updated 180 guide for Machinist. So you know how, how I did the 180 on water there? Or how I tried to like simplify the strat as much as possible to reduce stress? I, I, think, I think Machinist needs something like that now. Another strength, so we're gonna do a nice warp again. So, this is a floor that we can technically do without using anything. I, I, I'm, I honestly think I will Serenity because we are sitting at three Serenities, which is very good. But I, I guess I can show you like that this this is the power of water right there. Raw Intuition makes this free. Even if I had no buffs, it's like every time I press Raw Intuition, I'm going to yield back 30% of my health. So nothing's going to kill us. Definitely nothing is going to kill us for as long as we have buffs. Uh, but the reason I think I might serenity this anyway is because uh, it's it's bad for time, right? Like, I do, I'm doing less damage overall. And for this reason, I will serenity anyway. But I just wanted to show you that th this this is why war is really good in these higher floors. Is because if you get no item, you don't care. But we will serenity for time, uh, make sure that we have a good time. Though I'm gonna be honest, looking at the time, we're kind of a... We're kind of at a ridiculous pace right now. Like, I, I really don't see this timing out ever. I've inspired you to do war. Yeah, I'm glad, man. I'm glad. I hope you give it a go. It's a really... It's, it's damn strong, like... I know you do need like to be better at using commanders than on than something like machinists, right? But I, I feel like this is this is not like I feel like it makes it more than makes up for like everything else. Like it's so it's so different from like machinists. Like if I was on this floor on machinist it's I, I I would not be face thanking the monsters, you know, like this is just not how you play machinist. Warriors, haters unite. <laughs> nah man, I love warrior. We'll never be a hater of warrior. All right, let me get that butchered. Nice. So, I mean, there's really nothing much to say about most of the monsters on this set. They're just, they're, they just have like a big tank buster and that's it. So like, whenever whenever you are, you have steel, they're very like easy to do. Whenever you don't have steel, they're still like not that bad. Just gotta make sure you rotate your defense as well, and that pretty much hit for like almost every single monster down. I think the thing that sucks the most is that on this set, uh, almost everything is proximity instead of uh, sight. So there's a lot of times that you want to get to the key, and there's just like a, a million proximity monsters between you and it. Which means you have to kill them.
So we have a Mimic there. That's fine. We got the serenity back. Very good. Though I would say it's it's extremely unlikely that we would have to use like three serenities now. Very unlikely. So this is one of the monsters that when you don't have your steel, I just kind of respect its damage. Just make sure you have defensives up every time it's about to tank buster. And you should be fine. He's there. I will need to kill a couple of monsters to uh, deal with it. <clears throat> By the way, I I highly recommend you prioritize killing raids uh, whenever you have a choice. Because if you leave too many raids uh, alive, they're gonna be spamming that circle AoE and it's gonna put you like in a bad position at some point and you're gonna die. See, I've seen it happen a lot. Like this, right? I like, I sh like. I, I I'm tempted to say you should like 95 percent of the time interrupt or stun the the screen. Like if if you try to run away from the screen, you're probably gonna like run into something bad. <clears throat> There's just not enough space. Still not open. Let's kill the dragon now. By the way, don't ever hesitate, like, if you're, if you're fighting, like, a monster in a tight spot and then you suddenly you're, like, bombarded by EOEs, like, don't feel bad to use own game, you know, like, just as a, sa a fail-safe. Nothing wrong with that. So, we're, we're gonna do the next thing for the, the same thing for the next floor, we're gonna use a steel in, before we go in, plus a strength. We're also gonna have ones, because why not? So if we get a, bu a, a floor with bad debuffs, we have a chance to be able to do it.
Now we have HP down, but that's not really a, that's not really a bad debuff uh, for our tank. So yeah, that's a bad debuff if you're playing DPS, but it's not a bad debuff on a tank. So a, a tip against these Fashans, you their rotation is they, they will do stone twice, then they will do the cone. The 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 fire the death thing. But when they're doing that, they're doing no damage to you, right? So this is actually a good thing. If if you're kiting it around, it will do more stones. It will do like not only two, it will do multiple. Like that's the third one. We did if while I was hitting him around, he did three stones instead of two. So when you're fighting the Fashan, you actually want to be. Uh, oh, sorry, my microphone moved there. Uh, when you're fighting the Fashan, you actually want to be standing still. So we're gonna kill this ghost first. Because I don't want it to be shooting at me when I'm fighting something else. Just stun. We we have a lot of resources left, right? Like I don't. I know when I did my no chest run, I tr I was like, you know, I tried to keep as much as I could. Like in this case, I don't really want to do that. I want to show you, show you like. Uh, well, what what it's gonna look like on the very last one? I would gonna fight a knight. We've never fought one yet. I do have a steel. It's the same as every monster. Like if you don't have a steel, just make sure you use your defensive a little better, and make sure you're drinking potions nonstop as well. So I'm gonna show you how you're supposed to do this guy. You're not gonna kill him before he does the enrage. So when he when he does the cone again, the, sorry, the donut again. Uh, as soon as he finishes the donut, he's gonna do it soon. There. As soon as he finishes this, he's going to do something called like a buff on himself. So just be ready for it. When he does this, run away. Just run away until the, the damage up is uh, gone, and then you can resume killing. You want to do this because this this buff like gives it, I think, tw like twice as much damage. If I have a steel, I could probably face tank this, but if I had no steel, then you would definitely want to be doing this. Cutting the monster away. Oh, thanks for the follow, Dragos, Bloodline. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. So the Gorman, I think that's maybe the first one we fight. This guy does nothing except uh, he just does big damage with a tank boss. That's it. By the way, this is going kind of clean, but... Uh, you you will probably like accidentally pull monsters when you're doing this. By the way, we have uh, we have three safeties plus one side, so we can just get rid of the trap there. That works. The yeah, li like the first few times you on your first few attempts on like these higher floors, I would say you're almost guaranteed to like be accidentally pulling multiple monsters sometimes. When that happens, I recommend you, first thing you do is you pop steel on. Well, no, first thing you do is you should witch chain if you have some to spare. And then if you don't have a witch chain, the next best thing you do is probably put a steel on, just to like you can survive a little longer. Then just do the thing I said where you like, you focus down the dangerous monster first.
so all these monsters are proximity which is why it's taking a while to go to the key uh there's a treasure room again but it's out of the way so So the way you do this set, basically, in my opinion, is the first floor, try to rezo it. Like, try to pull a multiple mummies and rezo the floor just for time. Uh, after this, spend all your alterations, all your flights. And I would say spend all your strength. And just make sure you keep one steel. And then once you make it to the last four floors, just use all your rezos and rages you have left. And the reason we use a res on the first floor, it's first because it's a, it's a very like clean floor. Usually it's a good floor to just get a lot of kills fast. Like there's no debuff like uh, making it hard. And the other reason is that it puts your resolutions at two. It means if we find a resolution inside a chest, we don't have to use it right away. We can, we can keep it for later, so. That's always nice. Uh, it's open. I might have to fight this guy, but it's not a big deal. Yeah. So now we have three floors left, and we have one rage, two rezo. So we're gonna be using one rezo on each floor and one rage at the end. Well, I mean, there's really no no order, but uh, I would recommend on your first layer. Uh, I would recommend you actually keep a rage for the very last four, and the reason for that is simply because you're, it's gonna like it's gonna relieve a lot of pressure of you if you keep rage for the very last four. Like, it's because the the rage is the easiest for wipe in QTD, and it's just gonna make your life easier if you keep the rage for the last. Four. I'm gonna free strength again. Alter, why not? So we have three floors left and we have three serenities. That means we can get rid of the buffs, uh, the debuffs on any floor. He's over there. We have mimics, so I'm gonna do a rezo there. I'm gonna get rid of the traps. I'm gonna get rid of the debuffs because I don't want this no region. I'm gonna steal so things are safer. And then we're gonna do like a, a normal rezo, like nothing complicated there. So we're just gonna rezo. And every monster that cannot be stunned, you do rezo this way. You do one blast on it, one blast between you two. And then you do one blast on yourself, if it's not dead. All monsters that can be stunned, like the ghosts, you simply do three blasts on them. They will die before. Uh, they will die uh, before they get to reach you. Uh, so this is this is this guy cannot be stunned. So the same thing. One on him, one between us, and one on myself. So this is a stun stunnable monster. We do this again. And then these guys cannot be stunned. When when they when they can be stunned, only pull one. Don't pull two. So yes, re resolution is like a little trickier to pull off than rage. 
which is why I recommend you raid last floor just so you have some peace of mind and you don't stress too much about it. Next floor, I'm gonna show you uh, how to use Witch Chain to do a resolution. Because that's something nice to know. If you have a lot of Witch Chains, if you have a lot of Witch Chains, you can actually do like very powerful resolution plays. Because as you can see, if you do a resolution like I just did there, where you just kill like monsters one by one, you're probably going to be killing seven monsters at most. Which means you're probably gonna have to kill a little more by yourself. If you use a witch chain, then you're gonna you're not gonna have this problem. <laughs> Still an open. We're out next floor. Next floor, I'm gonna do a resolution play with a witching to show you how it's done. And then the very last floor, we will simply rage. So we see, we have uh, serenities for everything that's left. So we just serenity this. Now, usually, when how I this <coughs> sorry how I decide between side and safety, if I can see the key, I will safety. If I can't see the key, I will sight. That's it's simple as that. So now I can see the key, I will safety. So the way you do a rezo play with a witch chain, very simple. Try to pull a few monsters on you. Preferably monsters that don't have any kind of AoEs. Like these Gormans, let's say. Then I'm gonna get close to another pack of monsters, like these guys. Use my defensives, witch chain. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure I'm full health. I'm gonna use all my other defenses, then I rezo. This way I'm gonna be able to rezo blast like all these monsters at the same time. And look, the key's already open. We can straight up just go like that. But like if this floor was like, I don't know, if this floor was an 11 kill, I would have had time to kill 11 monsters but with the resolution very easily. Yeah, you can, do, you can do this on DPS, but on DPS you have to be very careful. If you don't have a steal on your DPS, uh, the, the witched mobs, they might interrupt your cast. So it's very risky. Also, they, they will just do like way more damage to you. 
So I guess uh, I, I I did say we we're gonna rage the last four, but we don't really have to rage. So let's just let's just open this slowly. I guess uh, I guess this will prove you that you don't need to rage this set at all. Which is why I I said like you really want to use everything you have on the on the last set it, to get past it, because on this set you don't actually need much to kill. So like right now we have 16 minutes to kill at most 7 monsters, at most. So we have plenty of time. So like you have to understand, like, like yes, you have time issues on water, but it's it's not as bad as you think it would be. It just looks really bad if you if you're like if you're not sure how to use your commander effectively. But like yeah, as long as you put a little thought to using your your commanders uh, for time only, then it's really not that bad. You're gonna have a lot of extra time at the end. So I don't have a steel right now, by the way, so it's why these monsters are spookier than earlier. But like I said, as long as you just keep using your potion on cooldown, your defense as well, you, you can kill everything on this set without steel, easily. Like for example, right there, I'm not doing a good job of that. I'm actually gonna all game. Because there I was kind of lazy with my uh, my buttons. Still need more. Wow, I picked up a lot of potions actually. That's really nice. Nice for me. And just interrupt this. This is a this is a very high kill floor. This is a 10 kill floor. Wow. I should open with this. This is 10. There we go. So we're out. So we will have cleared with 10 minutes left. Uh, we still... We we did not rage a single time on this set. And we only used 3 resos. No, no, no extra. No. Well, the tutorial run was a success. It's over. 14... 14 hour stream. Damn. <laughs> It's kind of funny. I'm actually gonna go to bed. At, like I, I woke up, heard the stream, and I'm probably gonna go to bed right away. So warrior is really strong. I think I, I think I should. I think I explained as much as I could uh, to help you improve your warrior. Uh, at the end, I, I was kind of running out of things to say, but I, 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 
I like it. I, it's playing so much on the early floors. <clears throat> my voice is a little, is a little uh, sore. My throat is a little sore, but uh, I'm gonna, I, I will survive. Warriors cleared again. Warriors is just so strong, man. Warriors is like, like sure, there's a little, there's a little, uh, a little difficulty when trying to use your palms uh, efficiently. But like once you get past that hurdle and you practice this, this is like a, this is the most consistent job by far. Like this, if you if you told me I had to clear it a hundred times in the least amount of tries, it would be on warrior. I would do it. I would not do it on machines. I would do it on warrior for sure. Very like just just a very like consistent job. I just I, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. It's it's very strong because it's consistent. You know. I, I almost feel like I almost feel like I could give you a guide of which palm to use on which floor on this job. It's like it's very consistent. <clears throat> All right. I am so hungry. <laughs> and my, my throat's starting to hurt a little bit now. A nice score. Oh yeah, I'm gonna sleep so good, dude. Uh, okay, so I'm obviously going to I'm gonna be putting this on the, my YouTube channel on the VOD. It's gonna be a VOD. I'm probably gonna call it like uh, Warrior Tutorial Run or something like that. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be putting timestamps in the video, like you know, like at the beginning of each set. Uh, but if any if any of you watch the video and you like. Like, if you see a part where I explain something, and you think that this this something is something important, uh, feel free to put a timestamp in the comments of the video as well. Well, I, let's say I explained, uh, I don't know, let's say I explained uh, landmines on floor 26, and you, you, watch the, you, you watch the video, right? And you think, okay, well, this is maybe important to timestamp, feel free to timestamp it. If you do, I will put it in the comments of the video. And uh, it will like let people kind of like kind of like know where to go. 